Push it in different ways. Air Force on the ground, and of course, Hawaii will fill the air with footballs. When we come back, we'll kick it off. This could be one of those nights. Air Force against Hawaii. Stay with us from Honolulu. From the News Center in Washington, this is AFRTS News. For the children of service members, a new school year very often means a new school. The Department of Defense Education Activity is focusing on problems children experience when their military parent gets orders and they move, sometimes abruptly, to a new stateside civilian school. In the past, we've put a lot of focus on the schools that we operate, but we really haven't paid a lot of attention to the uh, public schools that are offering education to the other 400,000 or so students that, that we have uh, of military families. Roundtable discussions with parents, students, and legislators identify problems military children experience during a move. Officials say some of the problems include graduation requirements and how they can differ from place to place. Exit testing or testing required to promote a student from one grade to the next is another concern. They also include parents not knowing important deadlines, such as those for sports tryouts before moving. The roundtable discussions opened the eyes of at least one legislator. She just simply wasn't aware of these problems, and having come to this roundtable, she became aware, and she said now she has something to work with, something that she can use to, uh, to help make some changes. The next roundtable discussion is scheduled for February 2002 in Washington State. From Washington, I'm Paul Walter. On News Plus, check out the Department of Defense Education activity at its website. There, you can learn more about DODIA programs and find information for teachers, parents, and students. a look at the Chevron series record for tonight's game. Air Force leads this series 11-5 and 1. In Honolulu, Air Force leads 6-4 and 1. And the last meeting, November 1st, 1997, in Honolulu, Air Force 34 and Hawaii 27. Russell Yamanoha working with us again tonight. Let's go down to the field. Now, Jim, we'd like to start off tonight by telling you that Ashley Laley it could be a very big night for him as far as records go. He's already set two records for Hawaii. That's touchdown receptions in a season with 14 and touchdown receptions in a career with 27. And with an average night tonight, Ashley Lee, Lee, Lee could really break the bank. He needs 87 yards to become the all-time receiver in star season yardage. He needs 71 yards to break the career receiving record. Ten more catches, and he'll be the all-time season leader in receptions. And he needs just one grab to tie the career receptions for the University of Hawaii. So Ashley Laley, a very big night for him. And remember folks, he is just a junior and every time he takes the field, the Hawaii opposing team knows that he's gonna get the ball and he's still getting the job done. Number eight, a big receiver for the Warriors. That's, uh, that's true, Russ. Let's uh, go to tonight's keys to the game. Here's Coach Dick Tomey. Well, Jim, I, I think the keys to the game are who can play left-handed tonight. In other words, how well can Hawaii run and how well can Air Force throw? Because I think that both teams are set to stop what the other strength is. And I think they can do things that to affect that. Uh, much like Oklahoma State today was set to uh, stop the spread pass attack of, of Oklahoma. They did some good, but the big thing they did was they stopped their run and, and rushed the passer. So I think if Hawaii can run well, they enhance their chances of winning. If Air Force can throw the play action pass like Rice did effectively, that enhances their opportunities. Hawaii coached by June Jones in his third year. He is 19 and 16 as coach of the Rainbow Warriors. Hawaii 7 and 3 in 2001. They are 5 and 3 in the Western Athletic Conference. Hawaii is third in the nation in passing, averaging 352 yards per game. Jim, can I make a comment here? I, I think I just want to highlight here how hard it is to win in college football. June Jones has done a tremendous job at the University of Hawaii, 
and everybody would say that he is three games over 500 for three seasons and that just highlights how difficult it is to win on a, on a weekly basis in the sport of college football. Air Force is coached by Fisher DeBerry. He is in his 18th year, 140-77-1. He is third in the nation for active tenure behind Joe Paterno at Penn State, who has 36 years. Bobby Bowden at Florida State, 26 years. And against Hawaii, he is 9-3-1. And, and what Fisher DeBerry always says, three objectives, win the Commander-in-Chief trophy, win the conference. He lasted that in 1998 and the last year of the 16-team WAC and win and go to a bowl game. Well, he's already won the Commander-in-Chief trophy this year for the fifth year in a row. That's the trophy of uh, best football team between the service academies, Air Force, Army, and Navy. Injury report now sponsored by the Queens Medical Center, Hawaii's leader in orthopedic surgery and sports medicine. There you see Air Force Tom Heyer, who started the season with very high hopes, will not play tonight. And Jeff Overstreet, a safety, who really controlled the defensive secondary for Air Force. He is doubtful for tonight's game with that ankle. For Hawaii, Pisa Tinoi Samoa is out. Travis LeBoy probably will not play tonight. And probable but questionable is Keani Alapa and Clifton Herbert. Herbert may play. There you see the mascot. And he gives you shots when you come out of that tunnel. Well, he gets you ready if you're not ready. And the young man that he just approached, Nate Jackson, is going to be the key to Hawaii's defense tonight because when you play the option, as, as Air Force runs it, the free safety's ability to get in the alley and make plays and read pass a run and be back when they're throwing is key in defending against an option team. Billy Fehoko, who is uh, the mascot, says he just wants the team to get up. If there are any doubts, he says, uh, let me be the one that uh, gives you the shot first so that you're ready to play. I mean, he says, put it on my shoulders. He's quite a, he's quite a guy. You see Fisher DeBerry there on the screen. Fisher DeBerry is, Jim, as you mentioned, one of the outstanding coaches in all of college football, has done a tremendous job at the Air Force Academy, is very consistent in the way his teams play. They play uh, very disciplined football year in and year out, and somebody that uh, I think most coaches in the nation really respect. Fisher DeBerry started at Air Force in 1984, and he has uh, continued and has run a terrific program. I mean, some of the, some of his players, after their military commitments are over, end up in the National Football League. And he also mentioned, Jim, that these are tough times for Air Force and their football program, just in the fact that some of the guys that are flying those missions over in Afghanistan played football at the University of Air, at, the, at, the, at the Air Force, and uh, our guys are very concerned about, but they're very proud of as well. Unquestionably. Boy, able to win the toss. They want the ball right away. Joey Ascroft will kick off to Chad Owens. Owens had a tremendous game. Took nine kickoffs back for a 25-yard average in my 52 to 51 win against Miami, Ohio. We are underway. Ascroft left foots it into the end zone. Owens will not return it. So what you will start at the 20-yard line. Quarterback in for Hawaii is Nick Rolovich. Rolovich, 6'1", senior from Nevada, Novato, California. 174 of 307 in passing, 56.7%. 2,313 yards, 21 touchdowns, seven of them coming last week against Miami, Ohio, and he's been intercepted eight times, coming off a career performance last week. So Hawaii will come out in that vaunted spread offense that they use constantly throughout the game. Four wide receivers, Mike Bass, is the lone setback with Rolovich. First down from the 20. Rolovich, sideline pattern. That's complete to Lully. Spins to the inside. Gets a shot at the 29-yard line, but falls over the 30 for the first down. So one play, 10 yards. Ashley Lully, that's his 68th reception. Came into the game with 1,166 yards. He now has 1,176. Here are the starters for Hawaii across that offensive front. Louis Fuata, Manly Kanoa, Brian Smith, Vince Monawai, and Uriah Moy Moore. And then those uh, receivers, Justin Colbert, Shannon Harris, Craig Stutzman, Ashley Lally, and Farrell Mitchell is penciled in as the running back, but it is Mike Bass starting tonight. Mitchell will play. Here's Bass. Bass really crunched. And he bounces off, slides off. 
on first down from the 30-yard line, gets out to around the 33-yard line. Justin Pendry, the defensive tackle there, to really pop him. The Air Force in those uh, three down linemen, Probert, Zach Johnson, and Justin Pendry. Then the linebackers, very active. Monty Coleman, Andy Rule, who leads the team in tackles, Anthony Schlegel, and Matt McCraney. And the defensive secondary, Paul Mayo, Sam Meinrod, Larry Duncan, and Wes Crawley. In motion is Colbert, second down from the 33, second and seven. This is Bass with running room. Bass, first down at the 40, to the 46. Larry Duncan made the stop for Air Force, 13-yard gain for Hawaii. So Bass, that's his 27th reception of the season, and he goes over 200 yards, 203 yards on the season for Mike Bass. Nice job of laying it off to Bass. He had Colbert coming inside on a short route, able to block the linebackers. He came outside, which enabled Bass to make a sizable gain. Second first down on this drive for Hawaii. First and 10 from the 30, rather, excuse me, the 45-yard line. Colbert again in motion. Rolovich looking long. Throws long up the sideline for Lully. Lully catches it, backpedals inside the 10, stretches to the 7-yard line. 47-yard pass play. Sam Meinrod was uh, covering on the play, but Lully beat him deep. You'll see here, this is just a nice job of Nick Rolovich. You go ahead to throw the ball to Lully. When Ashley is looks like he's covered, go ahead and throw it because he's going to outrun the defense, and you've just got to try to get the ball out there to him. First down for Hawaii at the seven-yard line of Air Force, opening drive of the game. 13-02 left to play in the first quarter. They come out in the T formation. Bass the single setback. Triple wide receiver to the left. This is Mike Bass. The five. Touchdown. Big hole. Great drive by the University of Hawaii. Mixing run and pass. Predictably ran the ball in a plus in a plus area, but a nice job up front of blocking by Mike Cavanaugh's offensive front. Watch the offensive line here. Come off, give Mike Bass a good spot to run in. And he runs in untouched. Bass is second rushing touchdown of the season. His first came against Utah. It is 6 0 Hawaii. Ayat puts up the extra point, Justin Ayat. And it is now Hawaii on the board with that first touchdown. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I. 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 I am an American. I am American. I am an American. I'm an American. I'm an American. I am 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 an American. Many early American inventors had some interesting ideas on nautical devices. Twenty years before Robert Fulton had the idea, steam was used to power a boat. However, instead of a paddle wheel, this vessel was more of a mechanical Viking longboat, driven by six paddles on each side. When the paddle wheel finally hit the scene, it was not only attached to steamboats, but also to this four-wheeled amphibious unit. Driven totally by steam, this 30-foot barge was not only the first working steam dredge, but believe it or not, it was also America's first automobile. And for those who preferred working under the sea, there was the submarine explorer unit. The diver would enter the unit through a floating cone and step into the weight suit. As he descended, the tube, which was sealed to the top of the suit, stretched down with him, keeping the diver's head in an airtight environment. What was not clear was how the diver could see his surroundings once he reached the bottom. They were all good ideas that needed a little more work back at the drawing board. Four years go, 80 yards in five plays. Seven-yard touchdown run by Mike Bass. The PAT was not good by Justin Ayat as he yanked it. So it is 6-0 Hawaii with 12.49 left to play. And Ayat will kick off. Brian Blue, number two. And 
Anthony Butler, number 25, deep for Air Force. It will go to Blue. He's three yards deep, and he will not return it. So Air Force will begin things on the 20-yard line. Keith Boyer, he needs 26 yards rushing to become the fourth Air Force Academy quarterback and the 13th NCAA player to rush and pass for 1,000 yards each in a season. He has five touchdowns passing, 1,208 yards, and 974 yards in rushing. He's been intercepted six times. First down from the 20. He come out in that option attack. Ball is kept by Boyer. Pitches back and thrown down at the 22-yard line is Leotis Palmer. Palmer, the leading rusher, that was his 88th carry, comes in with 414 yards. Tackle made by Hiram Peters. Offensive starters now for Air Force across that front line. Ben Miller, Brian Strzok, Paul Cancino, Brett Heiser, and Joe Pugh. Run backs for the uh, receivers, Runyon and Fleming, then Schaefer getting the start, Palmer and Clark. This is Schaefer. Breaks into the secondary, gets out over the 30 to the 31 yard line. Chris Brown, who leads the team in tackles for Hawaii, and Nate Jackson converged on him. The Warriors have these players on defense Lanui Correa, Mike Iosua, Lance Samu Seba, and Joe Correa across that defensive front. The linebackers, Matt Wright, Chris Brown, and Kiani Alapa. And the defensive secondary, Hiram Peters, Jacob Espial, Nate Jackson, and Abraham Ilamimian. First down from the 31. In motion is Clark. Ball is kept by Boyer. Turns the corner. Good running room. Gets out over the 40. Very close to the first down. In fact, he may have it. Out to the 42-yard line. 10-yard gain. Hawaii has had trouble with option teams. They had trouble against Rice. Hawaii led 21-7 in that game, and Rice came back to win that 27-21. Two really different styles of attack on offense, but both terrific ways to play football and what the Hawaii fans are seeing here with Air Force Academy they have they have gone away from the old wishbone alignment and they're more in the alignment that the University of Hawaii was in when Paul Johnson was here. Ricky Amizaga off to the far side in motion is Clark ball is kept by Boye looking for running room breaks outside turns the corner Bartley is hit by Hiram Peters Good gain on the play, close to seven yards on first down and 10 from the 42. So out near midfield, Air Force doing what they do well. And what they do well, Jim, is try to shorten a game so that the game does not last forever, so that they can maintain control of the ball. They try to get the free safety, particularly, to read run, read run, read run, and then throw the play action pass behind him when, he, when his eyes get lost. Second down. And three. The motion is Brown. Ball is given to Schaefer. First down and more. Gets inside Hawaii territory all the way to the 43-yard line. Air Force is sixth nationally in rushing, averaging 249.5 yards per game while they were in the Western Athletic Conference. The Air Force Academy won the conference rushing title 17 times. Brown and Nate Jackson finally converging on the stop. So here comes Air Force. Fleming playing with a broken hand. Number five, Ryan Fleming. The wide receiver flanked to the far side. Ball is kept by Boyer. Boyer hit at the 40-yard line, but then he angles forward to the 38 on first down. Gain on the play close to five yards. We talk about Ryan Fleming, Jim, and there's a player down. Ryan Fleming made all conference last year. All Mountain West Conference at receiver. That's Matt Wright that's down. Matt Wright, the linebacker, 6-0 junior from Kailua, went to Iolani. He has one sack and one interception on the season. We'll be able, perhaps, to see the injury. Wright number 44. Let's see what happened to Matt here if we can. We'll see him getting blocked low. That's one thing that the Hawaii players are going to get have to get used to, that just getting cut blocked because the the Air Force Academy players come out of the backfield and cut their wide receivers crack back and cut downfield 
And the cut block is something that's pretty much extinct in college football, except for this style of attack. And it's something that you just have to, you just have to get used to. Concern now for Matt Wright. We'll take this break. Six. Sam, the older I get, the more stuff I end up responsible for. Washing you, doing my homework, picking up my room, it never ends. Some of our most important responsibilities are just common sense. Son, I know it's easy to forget to turn the faucet off when you're busy, but whether I'm at home or the office, I'm concerned about saving water. And you know what? You should be too. Right, Sam? It's up to all of us to conserve water. Auto racing got its start in America in 1895 when the first organized auto race took place along the shore of Lake Michigan. Over a distance of 52 miles, the cars averaged a lightning speed of six miles per hour. As the years passed, races were held across the country. Though some featured specially built cars, others were held with American-made cars that were stock, meaning right off the lot. During Prohibition, these souped-up stock cars were often used to run liquor and earned the nickname bootleg cars. The first organized stock car race was held with modified American streetcars at Daytona Beach, Florida in 1936. While the early races were run on regular roads, the threat of injury to spectators eventually moved the racing events to specially built tracks. Stock car racing is the only type of auto racing limited to American-made cars and has become one of the largest spectator sports in the country. Matt Wright able to walk off the field by himself. Patrick LeVar Hartley goes in to replace him. Air Second Force, down and five. Air Force in four down territory here. Ball is kept by Boyer. Boyer grabs as he gets inside the 35-yard line by Chris Brown. Close to the first down. That will bring a third down about a yard. Air Force runs several kinds of options, Jim. That's what that was the what they call the midline option. They run the triple option, which where they read the defense to give it or hand it, and they run the double option, where they're automatically giving it or handing or keeping it. Boyer now has become the 13th player to go over a thousand yards rushing and passing. Ball is uh, handed to Schaefer. Schaefer able to get to the 31 and a first down. Chris Brown again making the stop, the middle linebacker for Hawaii. All this drive now, Fisher DeBerry and, and Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator of Air Force Academy, are loving this drive because during the course of this drive, of course, the Air Force defense is sitting there on the sideline, as is the Hawaii offense. First down from the 31 yard line for Air Force. They trail six to nothing in this game. Handed up the middle. No, kept by Boyer. He fumbles the ball and it's recovered by Illuminion at the 10 yard line. Big play by the University of Hawaii. This is exactly what Air Force does not want to happen. They have to do a great job of taking care of the football. Boyer that time had to, he had the pitch man and he turned it up. He could have taken it on outside and option and, and possibly had a touchdown, but he decided to keep. And it looked like Chris Brown was the one that stripped it. Huge break for Hawaii. They will put the ball in play on the 11 yard line. First turnover of the game. A fumble by Boyer. Great faking on that play. Boyer had some running room and all of a sudden the ball pops loose. Thiro Mitchell now has gone in at running back. Rolovich first down from the 11. Steps up throw sideline pattern that's complete to Lali. Lali out of bounds. At the 16-yard line, gaining the play of close to five. Paul Mayo there to force him out. Let's go down to Ross Yamanoha. Yeah, Jim, uh, Matt Wright is down here on the sidelines trying to work out. The word on him is a sprained right knee, and he might return. All right, thanks, Ross. That's uh, semi-good news. Might return, depending on the severity of the sprain. Gain on the play of six. They put the ball at the 17. Second down and four. Oh, wait, you're leading. Six to nothing, 844 left to play in the first quarter. And Mosin is Colbert. Rolovich again. 
Steps up with time. Throws long. He wants Harris. Overthrows him at the 40-yard line. Harris double covered on that play. Well thrown football by Nick Rolovich. Early in this game, Jim, we've seen uh, Rolovich really looking at Ashley Lalee early more than he has in any game. Here you see the ball to Harris just outside his fingertips. Well thrown ball. Harris has come in with 50 catches, 565 yards. One of the big four. You could almost call them the foursome. And that would pretty much describe the caricature this year as receivers for Hawaii. Third down, three and a half. Rolovich, quick pass. That's complete to Harris. He has the first down, 30. Harris looking for more. Harris gets a torpedo as he gets to about the 33-yard line. They'll give him forward progress there. 16-yard gain. So Rolovich goes to Harris long unsuccessfully, but he comes back short and picks up 16 yards. He comes back and deals it into the short flat. The short flat is difficult for the for the offense for the defense to cover whether they're in man or zone because a receiver can get there so quickly and Rolovich is very proficient at finding that short flat open. Pass has gone in a running back replacing Fero Mitchell. Harris goes in motion. This is Mitchell. 40. Mitchell trying to turn the corner. 45. Red, excuse me. Bass. It's not Mitchell, but Bass. Bass out to the 48-yard line. Bass exploding into the secondary. Boy, he really had some great running room. So Mike Bass, diminutive, but effective. We said in our keys going into the game, a lot would have to do with how well Hawaii ran and how well Air Force threw. Hawaii has run very well so far in this ball game, which keeps Air Force's defense off balance, as you can see, as you see Bass tackled there on the 40, uh, 48 yard line. First down at the 48. Hawaii moving the ball again. Rolovich, quick pass. That is complete. With it is Colbert, 40. Colbert down at the 31. Twenty-one yard gain. Hawaii passing attack just on all cylinders early in this game. Mark Marsh and Larry Duncan finally made the stop on Colbert. That's Colbert's 52nd catch of the season. Hawaii hitting on all fours. Great protection by the offensive front. Receivers open all over the place, Jim. Hawaii very efficient, no penalties, no turnovers. Very disciplined. A little bit six for seven, 113 yards. Bass remains in at single setback. Rolovich looking for Lali. Checks off, throws to Bass off his hand. Bass was running in a vacant lot. No one was around him. You get the feeling, unless the Air Force Academy can make some defensive adjustments here, that this could be a long night for them because there are people open all over the field, and they're just having difficulty manning up with them. They're playing a lot of zone defense, and uh, at this point, Hawaii's offense is having a way their way with their Air Force's defense. Stutzman, Harris, and Lali to the right, Colbert to the left. Mitchell now in at running back. Rolovich looking for Colbert throws. That's complete. Colbert coming back for it. Making the catch at the 20 yard line in front of Wes Crawley. An 11 yard game. Rolovich going to the out route again. Terrific protection. Rolovich has such confidence in his offensive line, and Mike Cavanaugh's offensive line, as this season has evolved, has just gotten better and better and better. And, and doing a terrific job so far here tonight. No pressure thus far in the ballgame. First down from the 20. Hawaii at the boundary of the red zone. Rolovich throws. That's a catch. And then the ball comes out. Out of bounds, they say, incomplete. Harris did not have possession. And he was really leveled by Mark Marsh, number 47 from Haltom, Texas, 5'10", and only a freshman. He plays the Falcon in that uh, nickel defense. He comes hobbling off. So it is second down and 10 from the 20. Hawaii leading six to nothing. They've been able to drive all the way from their 11 yard line. 
triple wide receiver to the left. In motion is Lully. Rolovich looking all day. Throws down the middle. Touchdown. Over. Check that. Harold. Nick Roll. Shannon Harris. Shannon Harris. Nick Rolovich is just uh, just a wow. The last the last several weeks, just sticking the ball right in there with great authority. Well thrown balls, all of them, and tremendous protection. Air Force has got to find a way to get some pressure, or this is just going to be like a seven on seven for the University of Hawaii. That's the fifth touchdown reception for Shannon Harris this season. And is the 22nd touchdown throw by Nick Rolovich. Hawaii apparently. University of Hawaii, their first charge timeout. They are trying for a two point, a two point conversion, and they call their first charge timeout. Verizon Hawaii proudly continues its support of the University of Hawaii General Scholarship Fund by honoring a player from each team in tonight's game. Verizon Hawaii bringing you super fast access to the internet with Verizon Online and DSL, the designated subscriber line. Well, you see, you see Nick Rolovich talking to June Jones here on the sideline, and Coach Jones does a tremendous job of communicating with the quarterback, along with Dan Morrison upstairs during the course of the ball game, and just coaching as the game continues, so that the University of Hawaii gets better and better at the looks that they're being presented with. And the Air Force Academy obviously does that as well, but they've had a miscue on offense, a fumble, which along with big penalties against an offensive team are the things that stop drives. It is 12 to nothing. You can see that uh, Coach Jones talking uh, to uh, number 65, Vince Manawai. Manawai, an outstanding offensive lineman. And we'll see as Hawaii will apparently try for two. They have Firo Mitchell in the game now replacing Mike Bass. Hawaii has had literally receivers all over the place. And they have been open. And Rolovich has been feasting on that Air Force secondary. Hawaii putting the ball in the right hash. This means that they're they're setting up to, to have a movement pass to the left to give themselves some field or get the defense to overshift to the left and come back to the right. Possibly run back to the right. We'll see. In motion is Stutzman from the T formation. Throwing into the end zone. Two points. Stutzman. Just get themselves a little space out to the left and come back and, and uh, attack the inside of the defense to Stutzman. So Stutzman able to leap for the catch and hold on. That's Harris's touchdown. Stutzman comes back for the two-point conversion, and it is 14. From the News Center in Washington, this is an AFRTS News Update. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld visited some of America's Special Operations Forces at Fort Bragg, North doing? Carolina. He saw their specialized equipment and learned of the wealth of real-world experience they bring to the war on terrorism. Numerous operations in six Central South American countries. We trained and prepared a Nigerian Infantry Battalion for combat operations in Sierra Leone. My detachment advised and assisted the Greeks in the successful rescue of uh, 15 hostages. And give us me just enormous proud pride to be able to say to each of you how much respect that we all have for you and for what you do. You have well earned your outstanding reputation. Last news update, I'm George Yorn. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky too. I'll be sure, Ken. You too. There's this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah. He's in makeup. Okay. Gonna see the ball put on the right hash. 
We're going to see an isolation on Stutzman as he runs his route into the end zone out of motion and turns back to the inside, opens up behind the defense, and Rolovitz lets him have a near perfect pass. Justin Ayotte will kick off for Hawaii now, leading 14 to nothing. Kicks it into the end zone deep. And that ball caught by Brian Blue, and he will not return it. Air Force will put the ball in play at the 20 yard line. Big Island Candies in Hilo is the home of the famous chocolate dip shortbread cookie, as well as other delectable chocolates. Visit them online at BigIslandCandies.com or call 1 800 935 5510 for a free winter catalog. First down for Air Force at the 20 yard line. James Burns now in at fullback. Daryl Stevens in motion. Boyer Stevens foot races up the far sideline, gets the first down, and we have a penalty flag on the tackle. Good run by Stevens. That's the only the fifth time that Stevens has carried the ball this season. And the penalty is against Air Force. Stevens from Midwest City, Oklahoma. Air Force's team from all over the map, truly a, a, a team that Holy represents the entire country. Offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat, first down. Bill Lathan is the referee tonight as you look at Fisher to Barry. Let's, let's see if we can find them holding Nate Jackson. You see it right here as he wraps him up right there. As Nate comes in to make the play, penalties like that make it very hard on an offense like Air Forces to function correctly. Still first down, but it is first and eight from the 22. Kept by Boyer. Pitches back. This is Palmer. Palmer with open field. Palmer out over the 40, all the way to the 42-yard line. So Air Force keeping on. And doing what they do best. Palmer, 5'8 junior from Darien, Ohio. He has rushed for 414 yards and two touchdowns on the season. Does everything. Returns punts, returns kicks. There you see the pitch. Pretty soon it's going to be time for Air Force to dust off the University of Hawaii. See if they can catch Nate Jackson filling the alley too quick. Here comes Boyer again. Pitch back. And turning it is Stevens. Stevens rolled out in front of the... Air Force bench Jacob Espial comes across another good game Air Force has been able to move the ball it's just that they uh, have turned it over and Hawaii has taken that turnover that fumbled deep in Hawaii territory at the 11 yard line and marched right up the field and scored again Air Force Jim you notice is pitches the ball forward a lot which is a forward pass which if it's bobbled is just an incomplete pass we see the brace on the right, Matt Wright has returned to the game. Ball is uh, handed to Burns, and Burns inside the Hawaii 45 to the 43-yard line. So the drive continues for Air Force. 6.06 left in the first quarter. It doesn't make, matter how many yards they make, if Hawaii can keep, can keep interrupting them with penalties or turnovers, then they can, they can do a good job defensively here this evening. Butler and Clark are the halfbacks. Ball is kept by Boyer. This is a pitch to Butler. Butler puts his head down and is dumped at the 40-yard line. Nate Jackson flying up from the secondary. The other thing, Jim, I think is really important. I think Hawaii's defense in the first quarter, it's going to be the toughest quarter they have because they will warm to the task. They will get up to speed with Air Force because Air Force is obviously executing a lot better than Hawaii's scout team could execute. And when you're seeing a, an offense, it's a little different. The first quarter is very important for the defense because they'll get better. In motion, it's Clark. Ball is given to James Burns, the fullback, and Burns short of the first down. Gets to the 35-yard line. He's rolled down by Chris Brown. Brown has been an integral part of the Hawaii defense here in the first quarter. So that will bring up third down and short yardage. So you see Kevin Lempa. He is the defensive coordinator for the University of Hawaii. He was commenting this week on what you said last week, Coach. You said, I, I heard that you said that 
The game last week between Miami and Hawaii was a defensive coordinator's nightmare. Jim, this could be play action pass for a touchdown. Come back and try to pick it up on fourth down. Ball is kept by Boyer. Pitch to Butler. Butler with the first down. Gets just inside the marker to the 31 yard line. Robert Grant in the game at the linebacker, replacing Keanu Alapa, making the tackle for Hawaii. Commenting on last week's game, Miami of Ohio lost today, scored 20 points. I think scored two touchdowns. So that's that's hard to imagine for those that were here, but that just shows the volatile nature of college football. Labasco and Anthony Park are the wide receivers. Air Force, Boyer pitches back. This is Palmer. Palmer at the 25. Palmer at the 20. At the 10. Aluminium. Horse collars him out of bounds at the 8 yard line. So Air Force just opening the field and Palmer having a good fun run that time. 24 yards in the first down. There you see a nice pitch. Palmer takes it down the field. Good running ability. He's getting outstanding blocking downfield by the wide receivers of the Air Force Academy. Anthony Park split to the far side. Palmer, Brown, and Burns are the running backs. Brown in motion. It is Burns. Head butts inside the five to about the three yard line. Good power football. Three minutes, 31 seconds left in the first period for Air Force. Chris Brown and Nate Jackson. Brown again. And also Nate Jackson again from that secondary. Red zone offense, Jim. Look at this right here. We see 37 opportunities. They've got 33 scores out of that, which is outstanding. Second down, goal to go. Boyer. At quarterback Burns right behind him. The motion is Palmer. This is Boyer leaping for the end zone. Did he get in? He did. They say he broke the plane. Hawaii players are objecting, saying the ball did not cross the plane. Touchdown nonetheless has been called. Air Force gets on the board. The one advantage of the Air Force attack, Jim, is we see Boyer keep the ball here, is that they run the same attack in short yardage and goal line. Yes, it did. It looked like it broke the plane, barely. But they run the same attack in short yardage and goal line. They run out in the field, whereas the University of Hawaii has to alter their attack a little bit, and other teams do as well. So that's one of the advantages of their system. Brooks Walters, 29 for 31 in PATs this year, trying to tack it on. And he does. 14 to 7. Hawaii leading 255 left here in the first quarter. So we are seeing contrasting styles. We are seeing Hawaii just chew up yardage through the air, and we're seeing Air Force do the same thing on the ground. Well, and Hawaii's a more quick strike, obviously, but the other thing I see down here on the, the extra point is Sean Butts sacrificing his body. Everybody, nobody really saw that because he didn't block the kick, but he's sacrificing his body each and every time there's a kick, and that takes tremendous courage on the part of number 23, Sean Butts, who's done that time after time after time this year, and uh, he's somebody I think we all need to really, really appreciate, and there's guys like that on both teams. McKinley Car Wash reminds you that they will pump your gas, vacuum, wash, wax, and dry your car. You'll have the shine of your life. I agree with you. Sean Butts, I mean, he, he gets up there. He can vault. Well, my point is there's guys doing heroic things that take guts all over the damn field, excuse me, <laughs> and nobody notices unless they, they block a kick or intercept a pass or something. But they're doing great things. They're just playing their butts off, and it, it's, it's just terrific. Both of these teams are giving it up for the cause. Joey Ashcroft kicks off the channel, and he will return it. Here he comes. Another mad dash, 20, 30, 39 yard line. What a guy. He may be the most exciting guy on the whole team. He just does such a great job at what he does. The neat thing about the University of Hawaii's football team right now, like as you see Chad Owens come out of the end zone, he's a kamikaze coming out of that end zone. As you see him, come out of the end zone. He's one of many special teams players just doing a terrific job. We've got a penalty. So that fine run will be called back. 
exciting though it was. Holding during the return, 10 yard penalty, first down. That's huge, that's from the point of the uh, foul. Moves it inside the 15. And they still haven't put it down yet. Now they walk it to the 15 yard line and deposit the ball on the turf there as you look at Chad Owens. Let's go down to Ross Yamanoha. Yeah, right on this drive, Jim, we need to keep an eye on number 85 for Hawaii, Shannon Harris. To his thigh and he's having. Try to uh, clear up the difficulties of contacting Mr. Yamanoha on the sideline. Triple wide receiver to the short side of the field. Now, Colbert goes in motion. First down from the 15. Rolovich steps up, has all day, throws long, and it's incomplete. Up the sideline, running was Stutzman, and inside of Stutzman was Lalee. A little pressure that time by Justin Pendry as Nick Rolovich unloaded the ball. Pendry, number 99, 6'6", 280, the senior from Bellingham, Washington. He has two sacks on the season. He was the Mountain West Conference Special Teams Player of the Week early in the season in the Air Force game against Tennessee Tech. Second down and 10 from the 15. Here comes Lali in motion. Rolovich throwing again. Oh, wide open is Harris off his fingertips. Harris had left Rule, Andy Rule, trying to cover him. He was running in space, and the ball just overthrown. A lot of room to the outside. Harris running the post corner route. We have a little breakdown in coverage there, which is, as a secondary coach's nightmare, which it's a nightmare to play against this offense with people running all over the field, just like it is for Hawaii secondary, getting cut blocked and cracked back on. It's just uh, third down and 10. Hawaii one for one in third down conversions. Ball is given to Bass. Bass leaps for the first down. Does he get it at the 25-yard line? Larry Duncan finally halted his progress, but he appears to have the first down. I'll tell you, Bass has had trouble all year keeping his feet. He could have gone much farther on that run. Again, I say Hawaii's ability to run so far tonight has been outstanding. He switched the ball, Jim. If we see that, if we go back and look at that, he sw tried to switch the ball. Don't switch the ball. Keep the ball in the arm you have it in, because when you switch it when you're running, there's too much chance to have happened. Just what happened there for young players. Don't do that. No wonder he leaped for the first down. First and 10 from the 25. Rolovich in trouble. Rolovich escapes one, but not the other. And for the 32nd time this year, Hawaii has given up a sack. Sack goes to Adrian Wright, number 56, his third sack of the season. Wright, a sophomore from West Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, let's look at this, Jim. Let's just talk people through this. You see uh, Mike Bass switching the ball from his right arm into his left arm, and that's just a bad habit. Some players think that's the thing to do, but once you have it secure, keep it there. Now you see the sack by the Air Force defense as they rally to the ball and sack Rolovich. A little better pressure for Air Force. Second down and 15. Rolovich looking over the middle. Dancing, dancing, throws. Complete to Lully for the first down. Lully at the 40. Out to the 42. Mark Marsh finally stopped his progress. 23-yard gain. So Air Force, quite frankly, befuddled in that secondary. Well, it just has too much time. He has too much time to throw, and, and the Hawaii receivers are spread out all over the place. You've got options left and right and deep and short, and it's just, it's just uh, difficult when somebody has that much time. First and 10 for Hawaii at their own 42-yard line. They lead in this game, 14 to 7. 47 seconds left to play in the first period. Quick pass coming back to get it is Harris. Harris is hit. But he is aided over midfield by the hip. Felix Cole will be credited with 
the tackle. 31 seconds left in the first period. I just feel like right now June Jones is a play ahead of Richard Bell and Richard Bell the defensive coordinator for Air Force is trying to catch up June just he's throwing the screen when they're coming he's going deep when they're laying off it just it just uh, uh, right now the rhythm part of this whole thing is for the University of Hawaii. Second down about a yard and a half from midfield. Rolovich looking left, chased out of the pocket. Now throws, that's complete to Harris. Harris knocked down inside the 40. Anthony Slagle, number 41, made the, the uh, pop for Air Force. That's the end of the first quarter. Hawaii leads 14 to 7. Hawaii through the air, Air Force on the ground. Take your choice. From the 1840s to the present, some American sailors stationed in the Far East have embellished their standard issue uniforms. With the help of talented local embroiderers, they've added elaborate designs inside their collars and cuffs. On duty, it's business as usual. But on shore leave, the inside story is revealed. For more than 100 years, sailors have worn these modified uniforms called Liberty Blues. Uniforms, part of our American military heritage. Parades, banners, buttons, and speeches. William Henry Harrison, our ninth president, was the first to use them all in his winning election campaign of 1841. But it was a quote from a Baltimore paper that really got his campaign going. Trying to portray him as a simple hick, this paper said of Harrison, Give him a barrel of hard cider and a pension of 2,000 a year, and he will sit the remainder of his days in a log cabin. Upon hearing this, his campaign staff used it to their advantage. Overnight, they turned Harrison into the candidate for plain-spoken, honest folk. A skilled politician, President Harrison understood that before he could get his ideas into practice, he first had to get into office. William Henry Harrison, the president, the man. Fisher to Barry, his team behind, 14 to 7 as we begin in the second quarter. I think both coaches, uh, Fisher to Barry and June Jones, are just watching this game very intently to try to see what the other guy's doing so that he can adjust what he's doing on offense. Uh, the defensive coordinator's watching what they can adjust on defense because it's a chess match at this point. But Hawaii is, certainly has the upper hand of, so far. First down at the Air Force 38 yard line record record setting nights already for last uh, uh, Ashley Lalee Rolovich again throws and nobody there falling down was uh, Stutzman Stutzman on a crossing pattern covered by Joel Bilo wide receiver Ashley Lalee became the school's all time leading receiver moments ago and has 2879 yards. He surpassed Walter Murray who played from 1982 to 1985 who was coached by Dick Tony, who had uh, 2,865 yards. So congratulations to Ashley Lalee. Walter was a terrific receiver, but I'll tell you, Ashley Lalee is, is uh, he returns next year, will be one of the best in the country. Second down and 10 from the 38 of Air Force. Lalee flanked to the right. Rolovich gives it on the draw play to Bass. Bass hit as he steps into the secondary. He's able to keep his legs going. And motor to the 32 yard line. Andy Rule able to get, get him by the ankle, throw him off balance. So that will bring up third down and four for Hawaii. Rolovich goes over to visit the head coach, June Jones, as Rule comes out of the game. And Wright, number 56, goes in to replace him. This has been the short flat or the out to the weak side. Rolovich looking, throws, sideline pattern. That's complete to Stutzman. Stutzman made the catch, goes down. The ball comes out because of the ground. And that's enough for the first down at the 28-yard line of Air Force. Boy, that circus. Short flat on short yardage. Nick Rolovich comes back and deals the ball into the short flat. Stutzman turns it up for the first down. 
So a triple wide receiver to the left now for Hawaii. They lead 14 to 7, and now timeout has been called timeout. apparently by Air Force. Air Force Academy, their first charge timeout. Hawaii leading 14 7, just underway in quarter number two. I couldn't go a day without thinking about it. I hate to go home. All we do is fight. Hey, Tom, you got 20 bucks on you. So I took a few days off. Big deal. I I'll get the money somehow. I don't know what to do. It seems there's no way out. The signs are there. You have more than a money problem. You have more than a family problem. You have a gambling problem. The bottom line is compulsive gambling is an addiction. But there is help. This city was founded in 1864 when prospectors struck gold at a place they called Last Chance Gulch. Today, Last Chance Gulch is the main street and center of the historic district here. Even now, gold can be found in and around the area. Gold exploration eventually led to the discovery of sapphires in the region, and the mining of these gemstones continues today. Here you can see one of the largest collections of Charles Russell artwork, and enjoy a number of annual events, including the Last Chance Stampede and Fair, the start of a 500-mile dog sled race, or a bald eagle migration that occurs every November in nearby Glacier National Park. Originally a territory capital, this city has been Montana's state capital since 1889. What city is it? It's Helena, Montana. Next time Air Force goes on offense, is uh, they uh, might be making a change at quarterback. I guess uh, the uh, Air Force coaching staff not very happy with the play of Keith Bouye. They're looking to put in Chance Herridge, a 5'11 sophomore, next time they get the football. And, of course, Bouye going for that uh, record 1,000 yards re re uh, passing and 1,000 yards re running, running with the football. Yeah, he's already done that. Whistle blows on the ensuing play here. I <laughs> Changing quarterbacks, I would be puzzled Prime by that. Snap. Ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Well, the one thing, the, the style of attack that Air Force plays, their quarterbacks generally play a little more during the course of the year in and out of the game than some other people because they, they are in, in more of a high-risk type of an approach. Unless there is uh, some sort of injury, but Boye certainly has been able to move them down like the field. He sure has, other than the fumble. First down and 15 for Hawaii at the Air Force 32-yard line. Hawaii leading 14 to 7, just underway in the second period. Rolovich throws over the middle. Oh, wide open is Harris down at the 15, and that's a first down. Adam Haynes finally figured out the pattern. 18 yards. Excellent job by the offensive front. Air Force was in a twist that time. Just tremendous protection. Ooh, just a uh, game of inches. Game of inches. The linebacker almost got a hand on the ball. Ball is put on the 14-yard line. Lale is flanked to the right along with Stutzman and Colbert. Colbert got those in motion. Harris set up on the left. Colbert joins him. Rolovich looking left. Lays it off to Gass. And the ball pops out. Hawaii has played thus far without a major penalty. they played thus far without a turnover. And if the University of Hawaii can do that, or without, a, without bad pro uh, protection problems, if they can do that, it's very difficult for a defense to hang on. Beaverall Mitchell comes in replacing Mike Bass. Boy, he was in blitz last time and had Mike Bass with nobody home, and he he just caught himself looking up at the defense rather than concentrating on, on looking the ball in. Second down and 10 from the 14 of Air Force. Rolovich chased out of the pocket, throws incomplete. Good pressure by Felix Cole. 6-2, sophomore from Linden, Texas. So that will bring up third down. Rolovich with just eight interceptions on the season is really developing the poise to be a terrific quarterback because he, he knows he can come back. He's got 
He's got uh, the offense and the explosiveness to pick up the first down. Just throw it away. Go back in the huddle. Rolovich again. Fine. Gives it to Stutzman on the screen. Stutzman to the 10. Stutzman to the 6. Short of the first down. There may be a fumble. Air Force jumping around over there. Apparently, Hawaii is going to keep it. But Hawaii certainly on fourth down will uh, kick the field goal. Let's see how this looks in terms of where the ball was, was fumbled. Stutzman with the ball. Looked to me like it was out. Looked like it was a fumble. But we would have to slow that down in order to really be able to see that. Boy gets a break. Justin Ayat trying the field goal. This is a 24 yarder. And he pops it through. So Hawaii extends their lead. 17 to 7. We'll be back. And sports, your 24 7 sports channel. Nick Rolovich, you see uh, the Hawaii scoring drive 79 yards and 15 plays, 24 yard field goal by Justin Ayat, 17 7. Hawaii leads Air Force. The thing Hawaii does on offense, so you see Nick talking to Dan Morrison up there, they're very simple. The formations are the same, so they, they really get a beat on the defense as the game goes on. Hayat kicks off. Blue a yard deep. He's going to return it. Hesitates at the three-yard line. Gets out to about the 20. I don't know whether that was a conceived play that went awry or not. But there appeared to be a, a collision between Anthony Butler and uh, Brian Blue. I couldn't tell what they were trying to do there, Jim. We're trying to run a little reverse or uh, what, what they were trying to do. For every touchdown that UH scores, Cairo Plan Hawaii will donate $100 to the University of Hawaii Athletic Scholarship Fund. Cairo Plan Hawaii supports education in Hawaii, the backbone of our future. Chance Herridge has come in at quarterback. This is a big surprise. Herridge rolling. Now pitches back. And a very short game. Pitch back to Leotis Palmer. Palmer rolled out of bounds. A nice job of replacing on a crackback block by Hiram Peters, or by uh, Elamimian. Elamimian stringing out the play. Gain on the play of two, second down and eight for Air Force. They trail 17 to seven. Amezaga, wide receiver to the far side. Ball is kept by Herridge. Herridge gets to the 25, that's all. Chris Brown able to hit him. Brown has played stellar tonight. 
as we said, as this game wears on, the University of Hawaii will play better defense against this offense. So they've gotten through the first quarter, which is the most dangerous part of the game when you're playing against a, a wishbone type team or an option type team for one of the few times in the year. There's Keith Boyer. He's not, he's not pleased. Third down. Herridge pitches back. This is Butler. Butler has the first down, and Butler is rolled down at about the 34-yard line. So Anthony Butler out of Newark, California, 5'9". He's a freshman. Watch Travis. the offense line come off low for Air Force. The ball is pitched out to Butler. He does a nice job of making one man miss. Loses his shoe in the process. Travis LeBoy, not expected to play tonight, has gone in to the game. LeBoy playing defensive end. Ball is given on a sweep to Palmer, trying to turn the corner. Palmer hit out of bounds by Nate Jackson. Good gain on the play of eight yards. The boys, and the play players down. The boys' speed could make a difference, Jim, from the backside on the option plays. He can catch an option from the backside. It's Robert Grant that's down. Robert Grant yet to get up. Now he does. Grant appears to be a victim of one of those blocks. Let's watch the block here. Another cut block right there. University of Hawaii players all spring hardly ever get cut blocked early in the fall against very few opponents. Seeing that here tonight is difficult to contend with. Ball is given to the fullback, Dan, Dan Schaefer. Schaefer into Hawaii territory, fumbles the ball, and Hawaii may have it. They do. That's the second fumble turnover by Air Force. The difference in these two teams thus far in the game is the discipline of the University of Hawaii. The University of Hawaii playing against one of the most disciplined teams in the country at Air Force Academy, and yet Hawaii at this point has no turnovers, no major penalties. And yes. uh, Jacob Espiau came up with the ball. Espiau and Kevin Runyon were tussling for possession of that ball. So another turnover. Hawaii leading 17 to 7, and they will try to take advantage of this. All right. All right, here's Richard Miano. That's Jacob Espiau's coach. Great player at the University of Hawaii. Great player with the uh, New York Jets. Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles. First down at the 47-yard line. Rolovich looking, steps up in the pocket. Now throws sideline pattern. There's a crowd. And going up and actually swatting the ball away, perhaps to prevent the interception, was Harris. University of Hawaii going for the kill there after a turnover deep ball down after a turnover go for something big a special play a reverse. This is a sudden change situation for both Hawaii's offense and defense. This is the Hawaii offensive player. Harris playing defense and going up and deflecting the ball. Nice job. Second down and 10. Rolovich tries the other side. Deep to Lali. Has a step. Lali has the ball. Lali has a touchdown. <laughs> Terrific throw by Nick Rolovich to the outside. So that Ashley Lali could just give ground to the outside, make the catch. It's a perfect throw. 28th career touchdown for Lali is 15th of this season. Now, the thing that we see from defensive backs all the time, Jim, drives me crazy as a coach, is the defensive backs looking for the ball when they're beaten. They should not look for the ball. They should go to the receiver and try to play his hands, and they have a chance to knock the ball out. If you look back for the ball, the ball goes over your head. It's a touchdown. We saw that last week. We see it this week. Secondary people just have to play these passes with a little bit more discipline. Rolovich now 15 of 24 for 278 yards and two touchdowns. What's the 
inside story on high blood pressure? When blood is pumped with too much force, it damages artery walls. Fatty deposits build up, and passageways narrow. Blood clots can form, cutting off vital blood flow. If the blockage is in the brain, a stroke is triggered. If it's around the heart, it results in a heart attack. Once you know the inside story, you have good reason to keep your blood pressure in check. Robert de La Salle, a French fur trader, hoped to discover a route to the Orient through the interior of North America. In 1682, he explored the Mississippi River, claiming the entire valley basin for France. The area included the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and the Appalachians to the Rockies. La Salle named it Louisiane for his king, Louis XIV. Later in 1763, certain French possessions were ceded to Spain, and the name took on a Spanish pronunciation, Louisiana. In 1803, Napoleon regained the area and sold it to the United States as the Louisiana Purchase. When Congress divided the land into sections, the part that would become our 18th state kept the name La Salle had originated. Louisiana, named for King Louis XIV. Career numbers for Ashley Lovely. 182 catches, almost 3,000 yards now. 16 yards a catch and 28 career touchdowns, 15 of them this season. Anthony Butler and Brian Blue are deep kicking off. Is Justin Ayat into the end zone, out of the end zone. Air Force will begin at the 20-yard line. Boyer is apparently going back in at quarterback. Here's Boyer, who became the 13th and uh, 13th player in NCAA history to run for 1,000 yards and to pass for 1,000 yards. He gets yanked, and now he's back in there. You can rediscover our islands in an outrigger resort condominium from as low as $84 per night. Enjoy 50% off and choose from nine locations on four islands. Ball is given to James Burns, and Burns lumbers out over the 25-yard line. You can call 1-800-OUTRIGGER for information. 1-800-OUTRIGGER. So Boyer back in, as we explained. Again on the play of uh, well, uh, six might. yards. Coach might replace the quarterback to let the other guy get a look at the defensive set. So he can, he, he may have missed some reads in their offense. In motion is Brown. Ball is kept by Boyer following the fullback. Boyer ankle tackled as he gets over the 31 yard line by Nate Jackson flying up from the secondary. That's enough for a first down. The clock, eight minutes and 56 seconds remaining in the first half. Hawaii leading Air Force 24 to 7. Looks like Matt Wright is getting up slowly. Matt Wright, who had to leave the game in the first quarter, put on a brace. And then come back, still in the lineup, limping, still in the lineup. Very resilient players on this Hawaii team. They've played with injuries all season long. The motion is Brown. Boye on a reverse. This is Palmer. There's Matt Wright. Gets by Wright, but that's all. Wright was able to turn him back to the inside. Travis LeBoy finally tackled him. A loss on the play. Back to the 30-yard line. Great, great job by Matt Wright of playing responsibility. This is just Matt Wright being very disciplined, playing with responsibility. He has the reverse. He gets up there in position to make the tackle. He's got the bad leg. He might not be able to make it, but he makes the back cutback. Hawaii playing with great discipline both ways so far. Second down and 12 from the 30-yard line. In motion is Palmer. This is Boye running. Boye turns it upfield. Boye tackled short of the first down. Tackled at the 39-yard line by Chris Brown. And also, Elaminian. Boyer, this is a speed option. They load the end. Boyer turns it back up inside. Third down and three. This is Burns. Burns may be short. 
Anui Correa plugged it up. Fisher to Barry's going to be very tempted to go for this because it uh, they've not had any success stopping the Hawaii offense. I think this would be a, a spot right here they might go for. Fourth down and one. And they will. This season, they're 71 percent. This type of offense, they have a great chance to make. Fourth down and one. Boye running, leaps for the first down, and let's see if he got it. That is going to be close. That is going to be close. It depends on the spot, of course, and it depends on the foot, and it depends on people running in a straight line. They're going to say first down. They do not measure. First down, those are the ball. This is the midline option. And Boyer just takes it up inside, goes airborne, and picks up the first down by inches. Butler and Clark are the halfbacks. Ball is again kept by Boyer. Pitches back. This is Butler. And Butler runs into the green shirts after a good game on first down. Carries the ball out to the 49-yard line. 6.04 left to play here in the first time. Hawaii leading 24 to 7. Hawaii has had a, a passing frenzy in this first time. The, thing, the big difference in the two teams so far, Jim, they both moved the ball on offense. First downs are 14 to 11, which is very close. But Air Force has no big plays. They have no explosive plays. They have no chunks. You've got to have chunks in offensive football in the year 2001 because it's just too hard to nickel and dime people and get it all the way down the field without a mistake. Let's see if they go for chunks here. Boye well, yeah, gives it up the middle with the ball is Burns and Burns all the way to the Hawaii 40 yard line. Nate Jackson's helmet comes off. Patrick Harley and Nate Jackson in on the uh, tackle. This is a good tough run by Burns up inside Nate Jackson. His helmet's knocked off but he he's in on the tackle anyway. Nate doesn't need a helmet. Yeah. First down at the Hawaii 40. Burns Butler and Brown in that backfield. There's Boyer again. Pitches back. This is Palmer up in and what a play. Nate Jackson. Nate Jackson in the alley, Jim, and they have not dusted him off with a pass today. And if the free safety is reacting that quickly, they have to dust him off and throw the post route because he's reacting way too quickly and you can't account for him unless you crack back on him with a wide receiver. So I think we're going to see we're going to see them attempt to dust him off at some point here in the next next few plays. Amezaga to the right as the wide receiver. Runyon the tight end also set up to the right. Palmer calling a timeout. Confusion for Air Force. Timeout. Air Force Academy. Did Their second charge timeout. Penalty flag came down. We just wonder if it was a delay of game, but apparently they called time before the delay of game. We'll take a break. Preparing for your military retirement involves a lot of decisions. Things like where to live, job opportunities, furthering your education, and securing your family's future. One of the most important decisions is whether or not to join a survivor benefit plan. Your personnel office has all the information you need to help you decide if the survivor benefit plan is right for you. It's your family's future. Be prepared for it. The year was 1991. The U.S. military underwent changes as the breakup of the Soviet Union created 15 newly independent nations. President George Bush had strategic air command units stand down after nearly 35 years of being on continuous alert. After Iraq annexed Kuwait, more than 600,000 Allied troops from 28 nations met in Saudi Arabia to wage war. 
Operation Desert Storm proved the power of cruise missiles, stealth aircraft, and smart bombs. U.S. troops quickly took out most of the Iraqi command structures, while B-52 raids disabled many Iraqi weapons. Coalition ground forces defeated the Iraqi army in four days, and Iraq retreated from Kuwait, all part of serving our country in 1991. It'll be second and 11 as we pick up the action again with 419 left in the first half. Hawaii leading 24 to 7. Air Force trying to put together a drive here. They have it on the Hawaii 41. Ball is kept by Boye. He's grabbed by Samu Seba. Lance Samu Seba, the defensive tackle. Samu Seba from Waianae out of Farrington High School in Kalihi. First downs are 14 for Hawaii, 12 for Air Force, which shows how, how meaningless that statistic is. Ball is advanced to the 39-yard line. Amazaga and Anthony Park are the wide receivers. Burns is the fullback. Palmer in motion. Boye to pass. Throws. That's tipped. Incomplete. It was intended for Amizaga. Amizaga, the junior out of Grapevine, Texas, covering on the play was Hiram Peters. That'll bring up fourth down and nine. Let's take another look. This is Andy Rule tipping that ball, who's in the game for Matt Wright. Doing a nice jab. Excuse me. That's Patrick uh, Harlan. Patrick LeVar Harlan. Kahalui Maui, a freshman. From Kahalui Maui. He is only 17 years old playing tonight. There's the punt by John Welsh. Coming down, coming down, and it's in the end zone. Hawaii will have it at the 20 yard line. 39 yard punt, and no return. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. Hawaii leading 24 to 7. Oh, he has decimated the Air Force secondary. Nick Rolovich, who threw for 500 yards in the game last week against Miami, Ohio, is 15 for 24, 278 yards, and two touchdowns in this game. This is we're still in the first half. Aloha Airlines would like to say aloha to the Warrior Seniors for all their contributions to the University of Hawaii football program and wish them success in their final game coming up on December 8th against BYU. In motion is Harris, first down from the 20-yard line. Ball is given uh, to the uh, single setback, Mike Bass. We could have offside on uh, Air Force. Justin Pendry appeared to be very quick, perhaps too quick. Prior to the snap, offside, defense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. There you see the offensive seniors. Sponsored by Aloha Airlines. Not many guys in that picture, Jim. That bodes well for the future for Coach June Jones. First down and five from the 25-yard line. Again from the shotgun. Rolovich with Mike Bass back there with him. Rolovich. A little shovel pass that's tipped. Tried to find Bass. Bass at times too diminutive. Does that mean he's too short? He's short, all right. Because I, I get people say that about me. I'm, <laughs> they just say I'm too, too doggone short. <laughs> Bass is 5'6". In fact, my wife Nancy, sometimes she asks me if I'm going to be tall or short. I've got cowboy boots. I'm a little taller. I get to be 5'10 if I wear them. I've seen them, yes. Yes. Second down and five. Rolovich to Bass. One on one. Bass first down at the 30. Oh, he's quick. Bass was challenged on the outside, but he was able uh, to just shift gears. 
And go by the defender. We'll take another look here. It's hard to predicate your defense on somebody making a one on one tackle on Mike Bass with that much green to work on because he's just too uh, elusive. Mark Mars was a defender. First down at the 33 yard line with 321 left. Hawaii leading 24 to 7. We're in the first half. Rolovich again. Throws. Wide open. Colbert at the 30 at the 45 yard line to midfield. And down to the 47 yard line of Air Force. Another first down. In on that play of 20. Just too much time and too much space. Too much time to throw and too much space to run in as Air Force goes into a zone. Zone Colbert stops and nobody, nobody within 10 yards of him. First down, they have it at the 48-yard line of Air Force. Rolovich, quick little dump to Bass. Bass trying to get outside, and he's enveloped as he gets to the 41-yard line. This is one of the best jobs to me that I've seen, Jim, of, of mixing the run, the deep pass, the screen pass, the whole package. Of course, the University of Hawaii has played without a major error so far in the first half, which, which uh, with their offensive approach, makes, uh, makes it very difficult for the defense. Ball is now at the Air Force 40, second down and two. Hero Mitchell in the backfield with Rolovich. Rolovich chased. Rolovich now looking for open space. Does throws. That is incomplete. Oh, Colbert. Colbert was all by himself. That's an understatement. Colbert had nothing but green around him. Well, in 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 uh, defense of Nick Rolovich, this is very difficult when you're going full speed to your left to throw the ball back to your right as he escapes to his left. You'll see him trying to throw against his body back to the right. And I'm not sure the ball wasn't tipped. It may have been third down and two from the 40 yard line with two minutes and four seconds left in the first half. And are you leading 24 to seven. Stutzman in motion. Rolovich looking throws. That's complete to Harris trying for the first down. Harris may not have been able to get the first down. Uh, I think on forward progress going to be very close. They're going to give him. Uh, they're not going to give it to him. But Hawaii will probably come in here and go for it on fourth down. That's the that's the fourth time in a row that Hawaii on third and short has gone to the short flat. Hawaii fourth down about a half yard to go. Rolovich calls. A timeout. What we have seen here has been a study in in contrasts between Air Force and uh, Hawaii. Nick Rolovich has thrown for over 300 yards in this first half alone. 19 for 30 and two touchdowns. So Hawaii through the air has found the going great and the Air Force has been on the ground. 67 yards for Boyer. Palmer 55 yards, Burns 37 yards, Schaefer 22 yards, Butler 22 yards, Stevens 18 yards. So they have been able to move on the ground. I mean, it's an airline against a bus company here. 135 left in the first half. Hawaii leading 24 to 7, and now faced with a fourth down dilemma. Fourth. And a half yard to go. We have it at the 41. Call it fourth and one for simplification purposes. The ball is actually inside the 41 yard line. You just walk uh, walk uh, Rolovich up under the center and quarterback sneak this and pick it up. Because there's a lot of a lot of pukas in that defensive front because they've got to cover down on all those receivers. Just go to the right. Fourth down. Theodore Mitchell. Mitchell, I don't think has it. Did not make it. Mitchell didn't run up there uh, with the authority that he needed, and now we have a penalty flag. So something happened after the play. This will be dead ball.
Personal foul on Hawaii. That's going to bode well for Air Force. After the play was over, personal foul against Hawaii. 15-yard penalty, first down. Looks like it was on Brian Smith, but we'll see. Look at the surge. Come off too high. Uh, let's see what happens here. You may not be able to see it. You can't see the personal foul. First down for Air Force on the 46-yard line of Hawaii. Boye running and running well all the way inside the 35-yard line. Chris Brown finally chased him down along with Robert Grant. Laanui Correa also there for Hawaii. Good game of the play for Air Force and Boye. They want to get on the board here before the end of the first half. One minute and 23 seconds. One timeout. Now we have a penalty flag and whistle. Option teams will run. Right to the snap. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Option teams will run the option into the boundary in these kinds of situations too. So if they pitch it, they can go out of bounds and stop the clock. The motion is Butler. Boyer to throw. Throws. And that is, is it complete? No. It was intended for Brian Labasco out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Labasco was not in bounds when the ball got to him. That'll be second down and 15. Labasco trying to get his foot down right here and does not quite make it with his right foot. Anthony Park to the far side. Fleming playing with that broken hand to the near side. Boyer again back to pass. Throws. This time it's for Fleming. Ball knocked away. Robert Grant came over. Grant with two interceptions on the season. One of them for a touchdown, a touchdown against Utah. Fleming, quite a story, Jim. He's from Wyoming, Ohio. He was all Mountain West Conference last year as a receiver playing for the Air Force Academy. Did a tremendous job. Is a big target, 6'5", 215, 20 pounds, a senior. That broken hand has really hindered him. Oh, yeah, now trying for the first down. Dumps it. Oh, what a hit. It was intended. It was intended for Clark. Coming up to make the hit was Hiram Peters. Peters better watch the celebration. Now see, to me, now, Peters should have been penalized there. That should have been a 15-yard penalty because that's, that's exactly what the rules are for, to keep people from separating themselves from the team and celebrating individually. Just go celebrate with your teammates. So a big hit by Hiram Peters knocks the ball away from Clark. But that's a great play by Peters, a very disciplined play of staying home on flow away. John Welch in the punt, punting from the 39-yard line. He wants to get it as close to the goal line. There's the punt, waiting for it. Here's Chad Owens. Owens trying to get outside, and he can't do it as the white shirts attack him. We do have a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. 27-yard punt and a minus three-yard return that time. And we'll see, legal procedure or a false start, and then some discussion. Hawaii just may want the ball because they can they can make up. Uh, they're either going to kick it in the end zone or kick it short. It's hard to return a punt for a touchdown when you get the ball in this field position. They may well want the ball. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. First down for Hawaii. 45 seconds left in the first half. One timeout. That means Hawaii will probably bring out the artillery. I would think so. The First problem down. for Air Force, Jim, on defense is they have trouble matching up with Hawaii's receivers man-to-man, -man, so they're forced to play zone, and there's just too many, too many holes in the defense. The field is too wide with all those receivers. Hawaii spreads it out. Rolovich throws long. This is far too long. 
And what's intended for Colbert up the near side, flying up the far side, is Lalee. Lalee is 6'3". Paul Mayo, who is watching him one-on-one, -on -one, is 5'10". So we'll see if we go to the other side of the field this time, to Lalee. Talking to Lalee, I said, you know, it's very unusual. You stay in. In fact, the, the four receivers stay in the whole game. They don't leave. And he said in the beginning of the year, it was hard conditioning. Now it's no trouble at all. Draw play. Here's Bass. And Bass, and they swallow him up behind the line of scrimmage. Could have been the last play of the uh, first half. Now, Air Force should call timeout here, Jim, uh, because they should try to make Hawaii punt the ball. They can block the punt, get a touchdown that way, but they're letting the clock expire. I don't, I don't understand that, but, but uh, they should be calling a timeout here and try to score. So from the T formation, eight seconds left. Rolovich hands off to Bass, trying to get outside. Bass is tackled as he tries to turn the corner. By, by Wes Crawley. That's the end of the first half. Hawaii leads it 24 to 7. Pikes Peak is probably the best known of the Rocky Mountain peaks in Colorado. Named after Zebulon Pike, who discovered the mountain in 1806. It rises 14,110 feet above sea level, and today is the center of one of the nation's most popular mountain resorts. of the Rocky Mountains. If it runs, burns, spins, or turns, we're there from start to finish. The best racing action covered by ESPN can be seen on AFN Sports. We've got your race day fix. AFN Sports, your 24-7 sports channel. Air Force and Hawaii, the ground against the air. The Air Force, believe it or not, no yards as far as passing is concerned, but 246 on the ground. Hawaii on the ground has uh, gained 39 yards, but 306 yards through the air. 24 to 7 at halftime. Hawaii over the Air Force. Hawaii's air attack so far has been maximum effort and superior. Your best friend. When she twirled her hair, you knew she was going to ask for a favor. Sometimes you knew what she was going to say even before she finished her sentence. But what happens when she stops talking to you? When someone is depressed, friends and co-workers usually notice first. And it's up to them to get involved before depression leads to thoughts of suicide because sometimes only a friend can hear a cry for help. The capital city, the seat of power. The first constitutional government of the fledgling United States was deeply concerned that the selection of an existing city as its capital would concentrate too much power in one state or region. The compromise reached in 1790 was to build a new city in the District of Columbia on 100 square miles of riverside swampland donated by Maryland and Virginia. Out of Pierre L'Enfant's geometric design grew a dynamic and cosmopolitan city. 
Independent of the states, neither north nor south, Washington, D.C. represents all Americans and is home to people from across the nation and around the world. We're back here at Aloha Stadium, Hawaii, leading the Air Force Academy 24-7 at halftime. You know, in the NCAA, football and basketball are the two big breadwinners as far as uh, finances go. But one sport that is growing in popularity is women's volleyball. Now, Air Force in all likelihood won't be advancing to the postseason, but the Hawaii women's volleyball team is advancing to the postseason. It gets underway in just a few days. Here's a look back on what the Hawaii women's volleyball season has been like up until this point. The Rainbow Wahine volleyball team always among the best in the country. Now, during this past offseason, head coach June Jones, Hawaii head coach June Jones, had a much publicized car crash. And uh, he spent a lot of that offseason trying to fight his way back to be on the sidelines here tonight. Now, standing by with me are the three technicians who were first on the scene that day when June had his car crash. They were presented with the uh, game balls by the coach here at halftime, as along with autographed pictures. Joining me first is Alan Powers. And, you know, what do you remember most about that day? Um... I remember that the, the car was uh, pretty wrecked up, and uh, June Jones, uh, you know, he wasn't really with it. But uh, first of all, I'd like to say I, I dedicate this to all uh, city and county paramedics because this is something that we do every day. And, uh, you know, it's just lucky that we had uh, the outcome of June Jones was uh, as it is and uh, that attests to our training um, as uh, paramedics or MICTs. 
Also joining me is John Canulo. And, you know, I mean, what was your thoughts when you got to the, uh, the, the scene and you saw that it was uh, June Jones in the car? Uh, it was pretty, you know, it was pretty awesome that, you know, we, we, we found June Jones and stuff. And my partners and stuff like that, it didn't matter who it was. It was June Jones or any other person on the car. You know, we did the best we could as far as stabilizing him, getting him to the hospital with all our training from, you know, from paramedic school and so forth. So we tried, we tried our best to get him to the hospital as quick as possible, stabilizing him, and it was, it was all good. That, that was a, obviously a big call for you guys in the Jeff Kurashima. Now, uh, when, when you guys, when you look back on that day, and a lot of people are crediting you guys with basically saving June's life, I mean, he was pretty bad in that car. I mean, what goes to your mind when you hear stuff like that? Mm, well, I'm glad we just did our good job, and I'm glad um, Coach Jones is all right. That's all I have to say. I mean, you know, when, ever since then, ever since that time, when, when people come up to you and talk to you about, about things, so what's the reaction that you get from people in the community? Well, uh, they're happy that June Jones is all right, but, uh, you know, I'm glad that everything turned out as well as it did, as it did. All right, just, uh, just another day at the office for you guys, helping people out there in the community. That's going to do it from down here on the floor at Aloha Stadium. Stick around, folks. we got much more halftime coming up right after this. The Curtis SB-2C Helldiver was one of the most successful Allied dive bombers of World War II. This two-seat aircraft had large folding wings with an internal bomb bay that could hold a thousand-pound bomb load, yet sustained speeds of over 280 miles an hour. Its first combat mission was at Rabaul in November of 1943. From then on, Helldivers fought in every major action of the Pacific War. The Curtis Helldiver, a dive bomber that helped give U.S. forces an edge during World War II. In the mid-1800s, the area we know as Nevada was part of the Utah Territory. And the first European-American settlers in 1851 made their homes at the base of the Sierra Nevada Mountains. By 1861, there were enough people living there to break away from Utah and form their own territory, which they named Nevada. Now, Nevada means snowclad, a Spanish word applied to the Sierra Nevada mountain range by early explorers. Later arrivals opposed the name saying it didn't suit the warm climate they lived in. But when the territory became a state, some people tried to change the name to Washoe for a local Indian tribe or Esmeralda, meaning emerald or Humboldt after both a river and a German geographer. But tradition prevailed. Nevada, land of snow-clad mountains. 24 to 7 at halftime. Some of the highlights of the first half. Big fumbles turned into scores. Dan Schaefer of Air Force gets the handoff. And he runs into the green shirts. And the ball pops loose. Oh, then is able to take advantage of that in quick order. Nick Rolovich goes to the end zone. And Shannon Harris able to gather it in. Bumped into the end zone for the touchdown. And then a record-breaking touchdown and run by Lali, Ashley Lali. He becomes the all-time receiver. His 28th career touchdown is 15th of this year. And in yards, no one is better. Let's take a look now at the statistics sponsored by AT&T Wireless, your world close at hand. You said before the game, Jim, who can, if Air Force can throw, Hawaii can run. Hawaii's running better than Air Force is throwing. And right here, those are the stats that make the big difference so far in the ball game. Uh, the game is a fairly even game, except on the scoreboard, really. And that's a result of the turnovers. And in my mind, Air Force's inability to throw thus far, which is very unusual for them, because they usually throw the ball reasonably well. Air Force Falcon entertaining the halftime. Always a great show when the Air Force visits Aloha Stadium. Pearl Harbor at our backs.
to FN Sports, your 24-7 sports channel. Twenty-four to seven, Hawaii leading Air Force. Let's go down to the field now for what's on tap. Sponsored by Heineken, it's all about the beer. Russell Yamanoha. The coach, you know, some things change, some things don't change. Last week, the defense had all kinds of problems. Tonight. Your defense is doing a great job so far. Well, you know, uh, both teams haven't. I don't think we either team's punted. You know, they punted one time, but uh, you know, the difference in the game is the turnovers so far. And you know, we were here in the third game of the year against this type of team where we had a lead and we got to maintain that lead now, get some more turnovers and, and put it in the end zone. Okay, now, some things don't change. Last week, 52 points. So far tonight, your offense on pace to get at least that much. Well, I hope that we do. Uh, we probably have a good chance of winning if we do. Rolo's done a good job. I think this is the best he's played early in the game. He's seeing things better, and hopefully we can just keep pressure on him. What you tell him at halftime, basically, to just keep going the way they're going? Just basically exactly what I just told you. You know, we were here before. We gotta we gotta play like winners now. Get some more turnovers, and hopefully we can get way ahead and make them throw the ball because they don't want to throw the ball. All right, Hawaii head coach June Jones out here on the sideline. That's what's on tap in the second half. Thanks, Russ. Help support the Chevron State Football Championship game between St. Louis and Kahuku. Receive $1 off tickets with any Chevron gasoline with Tecron or Pepsi product purchase. Fitcher DeBerry knows his team has some catching up to do. Yeah, this first drive, Jim, is very, very important in the, in the second half. If, if Air Force could get a score the first drive, it, it changes the game considerably, but if they have to punt it to Hawaii, and Hawaii has the same kind of success, it's going to be a very, very long night for the Air Force Academy. But I think Coach Jones is exactly right. Hawaii was right here against Rice. They were ahead uh, significantly in the game, and, and they, they did not hang on to the lead. So let's see what happens. Justin Ayotte kicks off, taken by Butler at the one-yard line. to the 26 and the Air Force will put the ball in play there the quarterback is Keith Boyer and rushing Boyer 11 carries for 79 yards and one touchdown averaging 7.2 yards a carry so Boyer will lead Air Force and that offense again and that option Clark, Palmer, and Schaefer, the fullback. It is Schaefer immediately into the secondary, headbutting his way, charging all the way to the 35 yard line. That's enough for a first down. Nate Jackson finally met him one on one, an 11 yard gain on the first play of the second half for Air Force. Well, you just see the give to the fullback here. And Schaefer does a great job of, of uh, just running tough for the first down. Air Force has 246 yards rushing in the first half. And normally if you have 246 yards rushing in a half, I mean, you're right in the football game. But that's not the case here because of the turnovers. Nate Jackson is down. Nate Jackson's down. This is of great concern for the University of Hawaii. Jackson, third in team tackles, came into the game tonight with 79. He had a concussion earlier this year against Rice. He also had a motorcycle accident that he had to come back from and did. So concern now for Nate Jackson. Jackson, one of the mainstays in that Hawaii defense. We'll take this break.
this summer. Is Hollywood ready for Jay and Silent Bob? Hey! The real Jay and Silent Bob are breaking into show business. I hate how fake Hollywood is. The hard way. Jay and Silent Bob strike back. I think George Lucas gonna sue somebody. Here we see Nate Jackson coming up to Schaefer, delivers the blow, and Schaefer just runs right over him, and Nate takes the brunt of the blow. We'll see if he's able to return. Schaefer, good run on first down. Nate Jackson did leave under his own power. Ball is kept by Boyer, trying to turn the corner. He does, gets to the 40-yard line. Coming up from the secondary, Jacob Espy out of the safety, along with Robert Grant. Grant in there at one of the linebackers. Grant usually in the defensive secondary. We've got Sean Butts replacing Nate Jackson just as he did against against Rice. The only vulnerability he had against Rice was just he was vulnerable on a couple of passes. Second down and five. Schaefer again runs into Butts. And then they still try to bring him down and have not succeeded until he gets to the 41 yard line of Hawaii. Huge run up the middle again by Schaefer. So Air Force has come out with renewed determination. An 18 yard game by Dan Schaefer out of Lakewood, Colorado. 5'11, 230. That's a trap. They trapped with the left guard. They blocked down, down, and trapped the defensive left tackle of the University of Hawaii. First down for Air Force. Boyer keeping. Following into the line, following the fullback, Dan Schaefer. And goes all the way to the 32-yard line. They're going to put a, apparently a neck brace on, neck, on uh, Nate Jackson. What you see so far in this half, uh, Jim, is just a, is, is a result of a lot of years of running this offense by Fisher to Berry. And just, he got a beat on the University of Hawaii, and he's come out here and done the things that he, in his judgment, would be effective, and so far they have been. Second down and less than a yard. So motion is Butler. Ball is kept by Boyer. He wants to throw. Does throw. That is incomplete. It was intended for Brown. Brandon Brown, and Brown is slow getting up. That's Miano covering on the play. That's a nice job by Rich Miano, because I'll bet you a dollar to a donut that he called that a deep pass down. He called, he, he uh, because that was a second and very short, that's a predictable deep ball down. And he played the free safety different in that situation than he has in the whole game. He did not play flat. Nice job by Coach Miano. That's an example where a defensive secondary coach put his guys in a coverage that was not a short yardage coverage. It was not a rundown coverage. It was a coverage designed to defend the pass because that was such a predictable passing down at second and a foot. Concern now for him. Um, right. I hate to make him sound so doggone good because I'm probably going to have to pay for this some way. <laughs> but uh, he's uh, he's done a nice job. It's so good to see somebody that you coached and that went on to play at the next level come back and really help young people uh, play this game concern for Brandon Brown he is still on his back take another look at this play well, you see it I think that the thing you see there is you see Sean Butts who's a free safety 
playing deep instead of reacting to to run too much in a short yardage situation. Elamimian came over and delivered the blow. And, and so Brown slowly, slowly getting up. Well, they, they're in great shape, though. They can they can pick this up easily and they're right on schedule moving the football and uh, what's happened the first two uh, in, in the first half was in occasions like this Air Force Academy has fumbled the ball and uh, the University of Hawaii just needs to keep trying to play to get that turnover just keep ripping the ball ripping at the ball keep trying to knock it loose because those were takeaways both times that were created by the University of Hawaii they were errors. They weren't unforced errors. They were created takeaways. Air Force coming into tonight's game five and five on the season. Hawaii seven and three. Third down, less than a yard. Schaefer. First down. Schaefer gets hot as he backs his way to the 27. Let's go down to Russell Yamanoha. Yeah, Jim, the word on Nate Jackson is he's got some sort of shoulder injury that's related to his neck. They're trying to stabilize his neck. He says he's going to come back into the ball game. Right now, they're trying to fit him with a, a horse collar to try to stabilize his neck while he's out there on the field. But Nate Jackson, we all know it is a tough guy. He's coming back in. It's almost unbelievable. First down for Air Force. Boyer gives it on a sweep to the near side to Don Clark. He turns it up. And Clark advances the ball on first and 10 from the 27. See where they put it down. They'll put it on the 23. Gain of four. Second and six. Air Force trails here in the third quarter. 24 to seven. Trying to punch it in. They fumbled the ball twice. Hawaii has turned one of those fumbles into a touchdown. Schaefer remains at fullback. Butler in motion. Ball is kept by Boyer following Schaefer. Boyer inside the 20. Finally ankle tackled by Nui Correa. And Chris Brown, again that middle linebacker, Brown, the leading tackler, came in with 94. He's well over 100 now. He's related to former Yokozuna Akebono, Chris Brown here. Third down and less than a yard again for the Air Force. Schaefer, first down at the 15 to the 10. Boy, Schaefer has come out, and there has been some renewed uh, blocking up front. Heiser and Pugh and Cancino and Strock and Miller. Renewed enthusiasm, and, and Air Force Academy has really come out and is coming off the ball with renewed vigor and University of Hawaii is going to have to play very well here in this situation to keep him out of the end zone. First down, goal to go for Air Force. 11-21 left to play in the third. With it is Boyer. Pitches to Clark. Clark at the seven, maybe the six-yard line. Jacob Espial again as he tries to string it out. That'll bring up second and goal to go. Let's take a look at this, at this as they bring the ball to the outside. Boyer gets quick pressure, but deals the ball very well for a four-yard gain. So the ball is at the six. Fleming is a wide receiver, along with Labosco to the near side. With it, and rolling easily into the end zone is Butler. Very little resistance on that touchdown run. A six-yard touchdown run by Butler. Anthony Butler, that's his third touchdown of the year. He came in with 277 yards rushing. He takes this pitch, and then he just strolls into the end zone. I mean, no one is around. Good block by Palmer on the edge. That's just a reminder to June Jones that he's got to score with the football when they get it because uh, University of Hawaii has had a very difficult time stopping Air Force without a turnover. Time for the point after by Brooks Walters. Is good. And it is now 24 to 14. So Hawaii's lead has diminished to 10. Blowing 
stemmed from the Teton Mountains in the Rockies. The Snake River guided explorers and pioneers west, across the plains of southern Idaho, until it veered north through the impassable Hell's Canyon. It still attracts adventurers and explorers of all kinds. The snake is still mostly wild, but sometimes tamed. Peaceful, powerful, and proud the Snake River still carries the spirit of the American West. Big Island Candies in Hilo is the home of the famous chocolate-dipped shortbread cookie as well as other delectable chocolates. Visit them online at BigIslandCandies.com. Chad Owens is deep. It's 24 to 14 as Air Force able to take the opening drive and score four minutes and 27 seconds that that uh, kickoff goes out of bounds and Hawaii will take the penalty and they'll start at the 35 yard line but Air Force 11 play 75 yards Butler on the six yard run his third touchdown of the year first of the game that shortens up the lead and as uh, you say coach Hawaii has to respond. Well, that's Chad Owens right there that got that ball uh, given to Hawaii at the 35 because their respect for him as a kick returner. They they tried to overkick the ball like trying to overkick a, a five iron and uh, hooked it. Yes. Defeat Uso has gone into the game as a wide receiver. He has replaced Justin Colbert at the start of this uh, second half. A neighbor of yours. Yes. Lives down the street. Played in the Rose Bowl. Yes, he did. Played for Stanford. In motion is Harris. Rolovich looking, looking. Rolovich may run. He does. Rolovich is caught from behind after a very short gain of only three yards. That'll bring up second and seven. Justin Pendry able to see that Rolovich was running and he ran him down easily. Let's go down to Russell Yamanoha. Yeah, Jim, uh, you saw in that last uh, Air Force offensive series. This is the kind of game football is. The word on Brandon Brown is. He was kicked in the abdomen, and they're working on him right now to see if it's a rib injury or if there might be something internal. Okay, thanks, Russ. Hopefully it's not serious. Second down and seven for Hawaii. Ball is fumbled by Bass, still in the clear. Rolovich trying to get it, and let's see. Air Force may have it. I tell you, Jim, that is a great job by Air Force of getting on the ball, but what an effort by Nick Rolovich. What an effort by Nick Rolovich. I, I just, uh, that young man is something else because there are a lot of quarterbacks, as I've said repeatedly, that just wouldn't play with the same enthusiasm that he does. Now, he didn't get the ball to Bass. He didn't give, a, give him a good ball. He kind of slapped it in there, and you got to place it. You place it on his soft belly. Anthony and, uh, Schlegel, Anthony Schlegel credited with the uh, fumble recovery. They're working on uh, Rolovich. He may have been shaken up. With it is Boyer whistleblows. Nate Jackson has come back into the game for Hawaii. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty remains first down. So a five-yard penalty on Air Force. Air Force can get right back in this game. Air Force trails by 10, but they have had very little trouble in advancing the ball. They have been hindered by turnovers. They fumbled the ball twice. Now Hawaii has fumbled it once. And they've lost it. Now they'll consider this undoubtedly four down territory in order to try to get a first down at the 25 uh, yard line. First and 15. Burns is the fullback. Boye to throw. Throws on the middle. That's incomplete. It was intended for the tight end Kevin Runyon out of Aurora Colorado. He's a big fellow at 6'4", 250 pounds. And LeBoy is down. Travis LeBoy trying to play. He was 
injured and held out of the last few games and he tried to come back in this game now he is down. Here you see Boye throwing the ball you can't see LeBoy take the hit but nice job by Hiram Peters. Nice job of coverage. On the first down pass so concern now for Travis LeBoy. LeBoy has been almost magical rushing off the edge throughout the season but he has been injured and apparently is injured again. Americans were on the move in 1896. The discovery of gold in Alaska sparked a rush of thousands to the Klondike region. While in Boston, the country's first subway system was completed, alleviating some of the congestion on city streets. At Fort Missoula, Montana, the Army formed the 25th Infantry Bicycle Corps to see if the new mode of transportation could replace the horse. Across the ocean in Greece, American James Connolly became the first person in modern times to receive an Olympic gold medal. He placed first in the triple jump at the revival of the games, the first held in more than 1,500 years. To keep people tapping their feet, John Philip Sousa composed one of his most famous marches, The Stars and Stripes Forever, and people lined up to buy the first book with accurate cooking measurements. Published by Fanny Farmer, it was the forerunner of modern cookbooks. This was America in 1896. Travis LeBoy in a block was blocked in his injured leg and he left under his own power, but whether he can return from that recurrent injury, that's the problem. Second down and 15. Ball is given up the middle to Burns. Big hole inside the 30. Gets all the way to the 28-yard line. Now they're back on schedule. They're back at third and three. Third and three and a half. So James Burns doing a nice Chantilly, Virginia. Nice job of blocking inside to free Burns. You're going to see them coming off, doing a nice job on Chris Brown here. Ball is kept by Boyer. Pitches back to Palmer. Gets away from Elaminian. Elaminian is able to slow him up, and Grant comes up along with Harvard. Now this will be interesting to see if they go for the field goal. They are. So Elaminian coming up from the corner. Hawaii's doing a better job on the option. They've had trouble with the fullback plays. A better job on the option in this half. 46 yard field goal angle from the right for Walters 9 of 14 as long as his 48 it is placed in his kick it is not good off to the right that's not good Jim and, and I, I I fully expect that Sean Butts presence inside and his ability to elevate you know that plays on a kicker's mind because they watch the tape. They understand that Hawaii has somebody in there, and uh, you'll see you'll see Butts right in the middle here jumping, gets up high, and the ball just goes to the right of him, and it's not good. Certainly had something to do with that. So Hawaii dodges the bullet following the fumble by Mike Bass. He rolled Mitchell now as the running back with Rolovich. Air Force faking blitz. They do not. Rolovich with time. Steps up in the pocket. Throws. Rifles it across the middle to Lalee. At the 43-yard line. Boy, he just threw. He threw a Randy Johnson fastball that time, Coach. 14-yard pickup. Let's look at let's look at Lalee. He's the outside receiver. He's going to come back to the inside. Rolovich is going to hit him with a strike as he comes back inside right there. He turns it up the field. Neil Gossett now has come into the game, replacing Lalee. Rolovich looking, throws, quick throw to Stutzman. Stutzman stutters, tries to get outside, gets to midfield. And is finally hit from behind. Stutzman able to get just inside Air Force territory. Andy Rule able to backpedal and get him. Good move by Stutzman. Stutzman out of St. Louis. Stutzman closing in on 50 receptions on uh, this season. He now has 48. 
second down and two for Hawaii. 7-11 left the play in the third quarter. Hawaii leading 24 to 14. Rolovich throws. That's complete for 21. Thiro Mitchell to the 40. Thiro Mitchell 35. Down to the 31. Excellent play call that time. 18-yard gain. Nice job on the screen. The Air, the Air Force defensive linemen have got to be able to feel that when they don't get any pressure to pass protect and be able to get back in there and help make a play. But this is a nice job. Thero Mitchell gets the ball up the field, runs with power to pick up the first down. Finally, the white shirts converged on him. Among them, Paul Mayo. First down from the 31-yard line of Air Force. Ball is given to Thero Mitchell. Bounces outside. 30. Oh, running room. 20. 10. Out of bounds at the 7. Wes Crawley finally forced him out of bounds. Once he turned the corner, there was nothing there. I mean, he just went on the on-ramp to the freeway. Hawaii continually runs opposite, outside, opposite the set of the back. And Air Force was vulnerable in that, in that spot, as most of their opponents have been. But that's their running play that they like, the trap opposite the set of the back. Can they do it again? Overload the left side. The motion is Stutzman. Give it to Fiero Mitchell. This time he goes up the middle, probes that secondary, and gets to the three-yard line. Good blocking up front. Raya Moynoa, Louis Fuata, Brian Smith, Natalie Kano, Vince Manawai. And another Air Force player is down, Justin Pendry. That would be a huge loss to Air Force. Pendry has played hurt throughout this season. 6'6", 280, the senior from Bellingham, Washington. Let's go down again to Russ Yamanoha. You've been busy, Russ. Yeah, there's been a lot of injuries down here in the field. They're kind of dropping like flies. And Travis LeBoy, the word on him, re-aggravated a left ankle injury. His return is questionable. Also, Ashley Lee. He had to come out of the game for a couple of plays. It looked like a jammed up finger, so he's got problems with uh, his health as well. All right, thanks, Russ. Well, it's late in the season, Jim, and these guys, it's a long season for these guys since training camp uh, started in August, and everybody's a little bit hurt at this time of year, and all the guys that are playing out there have got something wrong with them. And so it's just a survival of the fittest at this point in the year, and people are, have to play hurt, those that can, and it takes a lot of courage and, and uh, toughness to for these guys to continue. Rolovich now 22 of 34, 346 yards and two touchdowns. Another 300-plus yard game for Rolovich. He is consistently past that amount. Rolovich, when you look at his performance, he had 324 yards against Tulsa. 347 against Fresno State, 307 against San Jose State, and 500 yards against Miami. Well, and Hawaii's, Hawaii's had a couple of, they've had a screen pass and a couple of great runs here that have made a huge difference in this drive that have gotten them down the field, uh, which will help them as the game progresses. Some physical runs uh, inside and out against the Air Force defense. So gingerly walking toward the sidelines is Justin Pendrick, big number 99. Now Air Force has a tough assignment coming up this next week, Jim, because they have to play the University of Utah. Ronnie McBride, a former assistant of mine and a longtime head coach of Utah, has done a great job uh, with his football team. He has a bye this week, and they have a game, a result of the tragedy in New York on 9-11. So Pendry taking his time, and he should. In walking off the field, Hoy already has broken the huddle. Second down, goal to go. The ball just inside the three-yard line. From the T formation, Fero Mitchell, a single setback. Rolovich turns, throws into the end zone. That is incomplete. Tried to uh, loft it to Lalee. That'll bring up third down. Very difficult pass that time, and excellent coverage by Wes Crawley on Lalee, who has returned to the game. 
So Hawaii comes out again, third down, goal to go, and the ball again, just inside the three yard line. Kept by Rolovich, throws, touchdown, Stutzman. Stutzman's 49th catch of the year. He has fourth touchdown. He had one against Montana, one against San Jose State, and last week, one against Miami, Ohio. So it is 30 to 14. Hawaii inchworms away from Air Force. Ayat in to try the point after. He missed the first attempt tonight. Ball is placed. It is kicked. And it is good. All right, let's look at this touchdown, Jim. Hawaii has three wide receivers here, here, and out here lined up tight. And they just fake the, the zone play to the left. And the receivers all work to the outside. And all three of them look like they had a chance to be open. A very unusual formation that time for Coach Jones, Dan Morrison. Rolovich, his third touchdown. That gives him 24 touchdowns on the season, his third touchdown in this game. So it's 31 to 14 with 549 left to play in the third period. Aloha Airlines would like to say aloha to the Warrior seniors for all their contributions to the University of Hawaii football program and wish them continued success in all their future career goals. Now you see the defensive seniors and right in the middle with his arms folded is Nate Jackson. Nate Jackson right here, somebody he will be very, very hard to replace. Kicking off, and this one could go out of bounds. It does. That was probably the worst kickoff of the season for Ayat. They had nothing on it. It did not have length. It did not have Free kick height. out of bounds. And it certainly. The penalty is accepted. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Certainly did not have direction. First down for Air Force. Big break. They can put the pressure on again. 5.45 left to play in the third. Chance Herridge has come back in the game at quarterback. Replacing Boyer. Schaefer is the fullback. Ball is kept by Herridge. Herridge into the secondary, breaking tackles. Herridge over midfield, down the sidelines, to the 40, to the 30. One man to beat. And finally, SPL knocks him out of bounds at the 13. Huge game for Air Force. Now, that's one of those chunks we were talking about. That's, that's what you have to do to have a chance on offense. In the year 2001, you have to make some chunks. 52-yard pickup by Air Force. And that's why Chance Herridge is in the game. Obviously has outstanding running ability. SPR saves the touchdown. First down for Air Force. Herridge continues at quarterback. Gives it to the fullback, Schaefer. Schaefer knifes to the five-yard line behind a good blocking line. So Air Force, far from rolling over, Air Force has launched another attack. 520 left to play in the third. Back to Russ. Yeah, down here on the sideline, 6'6", 280 is Justin Pendry. The word on him is a, is a sprained right knee and no official word from the Air Force trainers, but it looks to me like he could be done for the night. Air Force far from done. Second down, two for the first down. Again, they give it to Schaefer. They hold him away from the end zone, but he does pick up the first down. It will be first and goal to go for Air Force. Sean Butts and Hiram Peters there. This drive is just an example, Jim, of the fact that the, the option offense has an awful lot of explosiveness in terms of a quick strike capability, because if they can get this ball in the end zone here, this is going to be a drive of like a minute, the length of the field. Another tackle for Chris Brown, and Chris Brown is down. He has played his heart out tonight. Brown out of uh, Damien, having trouble getting up. In this game, because of the amount of running by Air Force, there's more pounding on the part of, of uh, the Hawaii defense are taking more of a pounding tonight than they have all year because last week was like a seven-on-seven seven game, but this week is, is a pounding 
kind of a game for the Hawaii defense and their uh, up front and in the secondary. And Kevin Lempa, you can see he's contemplating how to how to get them stopped. Lempa, the defensive coordinator, he said, uh, "Let's put it this way: over the course of the season, his sleepless nights have mounted. He has tossed and turned. He has not been able." To get a full eight hours, that's for sure. Well, I think I think the defense for many games, from like game three to game seven, was the strength of the team, and I think the last couple of weeks have they have not played as well. But this is very difficult, Jim, because of the style of offense going from Miami to Air Force is a very difficult chore for a defensive coordinator because such a different style of attack, and you've got really two practice days to get your team ready and that's one of the desirable aspects of the style of, of um, offense that Air Force runs and it's equally as difficult for Air Force's defense to get ready for Hawaii's style of offense they played Nevada Las Vegas last weekend who's a much different style let's see what happens here to Chris Brown we can circle him right here he's the man we're looking at He gets oh, blocked there. low. There it is. Chop Again. Yep. It's not a chop block. That's a cut block. Chop block's illegal. Oh, cut. It was not illegal. Oh, it, okay. All right. Looked like a chop to me. Ball is close to the goal line. That's a touchdown. So Dan Schaefer able to get into the end zone. Schaefer scores. Air Force comes back, highlighted by a 52 yard run by Chance Harridge. Just this is a nice line surge by the Air Force uh, offensive front down low the right tackle comes off late but really a good surge up front by Air Force ready for the point after kick is up by Walters and it is good so Air Force comes right back and they come right back in a hurry 444 left to play in the third it's now 31 to 21 and all of those light bulbs on the scoreboard being tested again Jim the difference a chop block in the nomenclature of the NCAA rule book a chop block is when a player is posted or stood up by another player and then somebody else comes in low and hits him and there's simultaneously contact I'm simultaneous contact by two players one high one low that's a chop block as it's defined in the NCAA rule book you can still get equally hurt with a cut block as yes so you can 65 yards in four plays a time of possession only a minute and five seconds Schaefer a one yard run and of course the big play that 52 yard run by Harridge so Schaefer 11 carries now 87 yards and one touchdown 31 21 far from over 444 left to play in the third Joey Ashcroft will kick off Chad Owens is deep Owens chased into the corner makes the catch of the kickoff at the one yard line Owens to the 20 Owens great balance over the 25 yard line to the 28 another remarkable run by Chad Owens. Owens worth the price of admission himself. So Hawaii will take over again Air Force putting the pressure on. Air Force has trailed in this game throughout. But they have shown that they can really chunk up the yardage when it comes uh, to their particular brand of offense. Hawaii has gone through the air and has done remarkably well there. Harris in motion. Rolovich with time. Throws. That's complete to Lali. Lali over the 35 stretches for the first down. And see what they give him forward progress. And that's right at the mark. Hawaii. Lali six carries, 152 yards and one touchdown. Hawaii plays the same four receivers most of the game which is most unusual it gives them a chance to have their best guys in and most of it is because they don't use them to call plays and they're in great physical condition first and ten from the thirty seven Stutzman now goes in motion Rolovich again looking toward Lali checks off comes back to the near side lays it off for Stutzman Stutzman at the 40 gets a block and then he really gets upended by Mayo 
Mio Mayo, Mr. Mayo. Here you're going to see Craig Stutzman right here just hanging out. Just being available to the quarterback. That's a good job when you've got and Mayo made a real made a real hit that time. Gain on the play of five. That's the 50th reception of the season for Stutzman. Second down and five. The ball at the 43 yard line of Hawaii. The throw incomplete. Intended for Uso, but the ball thrown out of bounds. Uso was covered by Crawley and Allen. Uso is coming back from an injury. Uso's best game this year was against uh, SMU. Four catches for 66 yards and two touchdowns. All right, this is the closest Hawaii's been to a, to a big down right here. They need to make this first to keep the ball out of the hands of the Air Force Academy. Three minutes, 34 seconds left in the third. Hawaii leading by 10, 31 to 21. Third and five. Rolovich throws. That's complete. First down to Harris. Harris inside Air Force territory. Finally runs out of room at the 47-yard line. Chased out by Mark Marsh. That's just the same play that they've run every single time in third and short. It's short flat. Throw the ball to the short flat. And the Air Force Academy is going to have to be able to stop that if they're going to have any chance because they've done the same thing four or five times in the same situation. Harris seven catches 84 yards and one touchdown. First down for Hawaii. They have it at the 47 of Air Force. Leading by 10. Rolovich steps up, has all day, throws over the middle, crossing pattern. That's complete for Lonely. 20, 10, touchdown. Seven yard touchdown pass to Lali. He is now eight catches in this game for 209 yards and two touchdowns. Lali is just too much for everybody. Nice stick in there by Rolovich, and it's a foot race, and Lali wins the foot races against anybody we've seen this year. 37 to 21, Hawaii leads. Ayat in to try the point after. People that like watching Lali play football, they're going to have a chance to watch him play, Jim, I think, for a long, long time. Lali now with his 16th touchdown of the season, his 29th career touchdown. He is the all-time leading receiver in yardage. Rolovich, by the way, doing it again. 27 of 41, 421 yards and four touchdowns. He had seven touchdowns last week. The thing about this game, Jim, is one of the best players on the University of Hawaii team, Matt McBriar, can't get in the game. He's the punter. He cannot get in the game. He's as good a punter as there is in college football, potentially. Not this year, but he will be. Nick Rolovich, another outstanding night where the statistics border on the astronomical. But it's all based on time. He has so much time to throw the last two weeks. And, and if people cannot pressure him, there's just too many receivers with ability with too much wide open spaces and, and people are going to have to be able to pressure him uh, for them to have a chance defensively. Picking off is Ayat. Line drives it this time. Blue deep in the end zone. He will not return it. The Air Force will begin at the 20 yard line. The Falcons have 20 first downs which is a good night normally and they're going to have to put together another scoring drive right here. Hawaii leading 38 to 21. Let's go down to Russell Yamanoha. Yeah, Jim, the list of walking wounded just keeps getting longer. Chris Brown, the word on him, left forearm contusion, and he was in a lot of pain down here on the sideline when they were working on him. Also, Matt Wright had that knee injury earlier. He tried to come back. He has now come out of the locker room in street clothes, and he, of course, is done for the night. Pitch to Butler from Boyer, who is back in the game at quarterback. And Butler chased out. There you see Matt Right, he tried his mightiest to stay in the game tonight. We witnessed uh, his determination, but now he is out of uniform and on crutches. We wish him well. And then now you see here's Chris Brown with the contusion, shakes that off. He is back in the lineup. 
Chris Brown's a tough cookie. He's uh, he stayed out there almost all the time this year with a with a number of different injuries. Second down and four. Boyer to throw. Does so. Incomplete. It was intended for Brian Labasco. Covering on the play was Abraham Alaminian. Rich Miano's secondary guys were just really squeezing the receivers from the Air Force Academy, really challenging them because they see great receivers in practice. They see terrific receivers and they see great routes. And so this is something that they're very capable of doing in this game. Two minutes, 33 seconds left in the third period. Boyer keeps. Boyer with running room. Boyer goes right by Bucks. Finally catching him is Robert Grant. More than enough of the first down. And a, and a penalty flag. Boy, that the official can throw. He threw that 30 yards. 18 yard game for Boyer. He's carried the ball 15 times now for 116 Personal yards. Personal foul. Face mask on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So we'll take another gander at this. Let's take a look at this to see if we can see the face mask penalty. There's Boyer. It's the it's the midline option. He tucks it away. There's the face mask right there by Elamimian. As he comes in right here. My circles are getting better, Jim, as the they series are. goes on here. They are. First down for Air Force ball. It's given to James Burns. Burns moves from the 41 yard line. Now you see Travis LeBoy on crutches. He is leaving the field to play or leaving the bench area for the locker room. Gain on the play of three, second down, seven yards for seven yards to go for the first down for Air Force. Palmer and Clark are the halfbacks. Ball is kept by Boyer, pitches to Palmer. Palmer trying to turn a field, runs into his interference. He ran into Clark. Watson Ho'ohuli in the game for Chris Brown, able to plug it up. And we have another penalty flag, short gain on the play of only about a yard. <laughs> so the penalty against Air Force. I was being told that uh, Travis LeBoy had to borrow Matt Wright's crutches to get off the field. Boy, because, heard, so we've got a shortage. Yeah, I've heard a bunch. You see there, you see uh, Travis there going into the locker room. I've heard Illegal of, shift on the offense. Two men moving prior to the snap. The penalty is declined. Third down. Third down for Air Force. I've heard of University of Hawaii budget cuts, but that's a little too much withholding crutches. Well, Air Force has got to take two cracks at this. They don't want to punt the ball at Hawaii. They're deep enough. They'll take two cracks to make this first down. Crowd trying to get into it here. James Burns the fullback. Boye back to throw. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. He threw that high. It was intended for Anthony Park on a crossing pattern. Robert Grant had picked him up in the secondary and that'll bring up fourth down for Air Force Air Force now trails 38 to 21 with a minute 15 seconds left to play in the third period excellent discipline by the University of Hawaii's defense that time against the pass in what I don't think was a real pure passing situation it was third and seven but I thought they could go for it on fourth if they got uh, three or four yards on third John Welch to punt we'll see if he does he puts it in or tries to get it into the corner. It bounces, bounces, and goes out of bounds up in the approximate area of the 11 yard line. 25 yard punt and no return. Hawaii will start in uh, their territory, of course. 104 left to play in the third period. My, my feeling about the University of th th that uh, punt, Jim, was that, that uh, the University of Hawaii, they have been so successful on offense that. Air Force Academy might as well have taken two downs on third and seven to make the first because Hawaii will be back at the 35 yard line very quickly unless Air Force does a lot better job defensively than they've done. Could be more records for Lali tonight. He's 11 yards away from Dwight Carter's single game receiving record of 220. He has 209. Rolovich throws incomplete. He tried 
to get that ball to Harris. So Ashley Lali, the leading career receiver, now going after the single game record. He has 209 and the single game receiving record 220. He's had five touchdown passes in the last two games. Rolovich has thrown 11 touchdown passes in the last two affairs. Second down and 10, the ball at the 13. Uso goes in motion. Rolovich throws. That's complete to Uso. Comes back toward the middle and his ankle tackle, short of the first down. Gets out to the 19. That'll bring up third down. And about, let's see, five. Sam Meinrod, the safety, is there to make the stop. Uso makes his ninth reception of the year. Justin Pendry's back in the game. He was looking doubtful, but he's back in there. He's a he's a senior. This is his second to last game of his career, and he wants to be part of it the whole way. Hawaii has BYU in two weeks on December 8th. Air Force next week has Utah. Rolovitz trying for the first down on third down and five throws. Throws it high. Tried to get it to Harris. And here comes, here comes for the Matt first McBriar. time Matt McBriar. Speak of the devil. McBriar, the Australian. This is uh, this will be his 39th punt. He has a 43 yard average. His longest is 69. And he can ozone it, that's for sure. 13 seconds left in the third period. Away out in front, 38 21. McBriar waiting for the snap from Brian Smith. Gets it away. This one of Wobbler gets out over midfield, but takes a Hawaii bounce and goes out of bounds at the 41. Good field position for Air Force. Now Air Force has uh, has a reputation in blocking kicks. They've, there's only one team in Division One that has blocked more kicks in the decade of the 90s than Air Force, and that's Virginia Tech. And they've done a terrific job over the years of blocking kicks, and so. McBriar hurried a little bit, understandably. Schaefer, Palmer, and Clark are the running backs. Boye turns, gives it to Schaefer. Schaefer goes around the near side and finds some running room. Before he's pinched, gets it from the 41 out to the 49-yard line. Excellent gain again on first down. That's the end of the third quarter. So one period remains. Hawaii is up 38 to 21 over Air Force. Come on, baby. Warrior. That's right, baby. You're looking at it right now. 1889 is the year of the great land rush. More than 20,000 eager homesteaders line up at the Oklahoma border, on horseback, in wagons, on foot, waiting tensely. The bugle sounds, the gun is fired, and from every direction, people burst through the cavalry's barricades. They stampede into the territory so fast that within an hour, Guthrie, Oklahoma becomes a boom town. It's all part of the shaping of America in 1889. Let's take a look at tonight's Fantastic Sam's Fantastic Fan. Reminiscent of the rainbow motif, Fantastic Sam's Hawaii, proud supporter of U8 Sports and the University of Hawaii Athletic Foundation. Second down for Air Force as we begin the fourth period. Air Force trails in this game, 38 to 21. Second and two. Schaefer, the fullback, Butler and Palmer are the halfbacks. The throw. That is incomplete. I'll tell you one thing about uh, Boyer. He has not been close with his passes, and you begin to wonder why Air Force is even throwing the ball when they have been running the ball so successfully. That pass was intended for Ryan Fleming, and it was not close. Elamimian covering on the play. Well, and you know, he's almost a 50% passer, a better than a 50% passer for the year, and we're certainly not seeing that out here tonight. He's 0 for 9 in this game. Third and two. 
Ball is given to Schaefer, and Schaefer has the first down. They will place the ball at the 48 of Hawaii. Ricky Amazaga comes into the game for Air Force number 80. He will come out as a wide receiver. Palmer and Butler are the halfbacks. Schaefer is the fullback. Kept by Boyer, follows Schaefer into the secondary and gets good yardage as he stumbles to the 41 yard line. Sean Butts off to this progress. So Air Force continues to move the ball and what they do best, that option. This is just the midline option. Boyer keeping two lead blockers for seven yards. Second down and three. Unbalanced line for Air Force. Palmer, he may throw. Throw back. Now he's in trouble. Palmer trying to turn the corner, being chased by the green shirts, gets to the 35, still on his feet, back to the 31. A broken play, but Palmer made something out of it. I'm just really impressed tonight, Jim, with the University of Hawaii's coverage because the, that's a, that's a, th a attempted throwback to the quarterback. They've tried several different things in the past game, and, and the the defensive coverage by the defensive backs and the linebackers has been very, very responsible. Palmer did pick up 10 yards on the play to the 31. That's a first down for Air Force. Schaefer. Schaefer pinched at the line of scrimmage by Samu Seba. But he's able to stumble forward. Kevin Jackson into the game at the defensive end. Also in on the play that moves the ball just inside the 30 second and nine. So now Schaefer is is 100 yards in this game 14 carries 100 yards and one touchdown. Boyer looking for the hole and he gets past Mike Iosua. Iosua then grapples him. Iosua gets some help from his green cladded friends including uh, the middle linebacker now watching Ho'ohuli playing in there for Chris Brown. And the ball is just inside the 25-yard line. Third down and three. Two down territory for Air Force. Oye pitches back. And with it is Butler. Butler inside the 20. Butler inside the 15. And we have a penalty flag. Flying in from the secondary. We may have holding on the Air Force. Twelve twenty nine left to play in the game. Hawaii up thirty eight to twenty one. Holding offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. All right, let's see here what we've got. Looks like they're trying to they hold SPL number three right there, a takedown. Good, good call. Good call. Third down and eight for Air Force. Are they going to throw here? Boyer rolling throws. That's his first completion to Brown, and he gets the first down at the 19. Credit Air Force. Brandon Brown, who left the game with an injury earlier, is back and contributing a 10-yard gain. Nice job, boy. Yeah, boy, yeah, that's his first completion. A ball thrown right on the money to Brown, who turns it up and gets the first down. Big play. So now it's first down for Air Force on the 19-yard line of Hawaii. Boye trying to get yardage and does. From the 19 to the 15, picks up four. And one of the Air Force players is down. It appears to be an offensive lineman. And it is Ben Miller, 6'4", 270, the senior from Columbia Station, Ohio. So he's down. This has been a game played in high humidity on, artificial, on an artificial surface. It is taking its toll.
The First Lady of the United States is recognized for her grace, commitment, and compassion. But one First Lady was known for this and more. You see, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt was not only known for her character and accomplishments, she was also known for carrying a gun. Now Eleanor was no Wyatt Earp, but she was in constant danger. Because of her outspokenness and her strong stand on issues, from workers' rights to civil rights, Eleanor Roosevelt received many death threats. Because Eleanor refused to stay away from crowds, the Secret Service implored her to carry a handgun with her at all times. And although she never had to use it, even at the most formal of functions, Eleanor had her weapon with her. Eleanor Roosevelt, one of many First Ladies with power, but the only First Lady with firepower. As far as we know, We're going to see here how Ben Miller, senior 6'4", 270 from Columbia Station, Ohio, gets hurt. Watch Watson Ho'ohuli there, just legs whip, hip, whips him right in the head, unintentionally. Just Watson was just hustling, and Ben Miller has come to the sidelines. Second down for Air Force. In motion is Brown. And with it, and a very short gain, is Schaefer. Excellent job that time by Joe Correa, the defensive end. Joe from Pearl City and St. Louis, and Robert Grant, Grant from Oakland, California, went to Skyline High School there. Horizon Hawaii proudly continues its support of the UH General Scholarship Fund. They'll honor a player from each team after tonight's game. It's a nice stop by the University of Hawaii. They've got two downs to make this. They're in four down territory. Brown again in motion. Boyer pitches back Palmer. Palmer stutter steps at the 15, stumbles and does not get the first down. Only gets to about the 12, maybe the 11. That will bring up fourth down. And Palmer not getting up. That's a nice job by Sean Butts of filling the alley. And what he did here, what Sean Butts did here, is he stayed inside out on Palmer. Palmer tried to get him to over pursue, but you see him break down there to stay inside out and give himself a chance to make a play. Excellent job by Sean Butts. You see him gather himself right there, right here. And then he was hit by Elamimian. Stay inside out, and then he was hit in the head by Elamimian's thigh. And so this game's going to come down right here. This is a big football play right here for Air Force. They may opt to kick the field goal because they're going to need a field goal anyway. It sure is. Look at those yards here. 472 rushing for Air Force. 427 passing for Hawaii. And look at the total. 482 for Air Force. 495 for Hawaii. I've never in my life heard of a team making 472 yards and not winning a game. <laughs> I mean, that that normally, that's a route. But the turnovers have been the big difference, and Hawaii's gotten them stopped on occasion. This is one of those occasions. Excellent job by Sean Butts of filling the alley and making it difficult for Air Force to pick up the first down. Leotis Palmer walking off under his own power. This will be a 30 yard field goal. Field goal attempt by Brooks Walters from Park City, Utah. The senior. He is now 9 for 15. Missed one earlier in this game. It is placed. It is kicked, and it is good. Air Force tacks on three more. It's 38 to 24 in favor of Hawaii, with much time left in this fourth period. Ten minutes and 25 seconds remain. Honey, would you get me some ice cream? Ice cream, please. Yeah. Thank you. It happens every night, all across America. Group. 
Air Force going 47 yards in 13 plays, 4 minutes, 41 seconds elapsed time. 29-yard field goal officially by Walter. 38-24, Hawaii leading. Chad Owens awaits the kickoff from Joey Ashcroft. Owens three yards deep in the end zone, and he will bring it out. Here we go again, gets to the 20. Owens trying for the far sideline and turns the corner. He's at the 40. Owens clear at midfield. Owens down the sideline. He may score. Owens being chased by touchdown. Holy cow. That was the, that may be the play of the year right there. What a run. What a guy this young man is. 100 yards. On a team with a lot of exciting players, I'm not sure there's a more exciting one. Holy mackerel. That's the first time a kick has been returned 100 yards by the University of Hawaii. Waiting for the snap placed down. By Flint, the kick is up by Ayat, and it is good. Let's take a look at this. This is a great run. First of all, he brings it out of the end zone. The coverage is not full speed. He breaks it to the sideline. They lose containment. Nice job of blocking, and he just makes an individual effort to get the ball in the end zone. Does a nice job of hanging on to the ball to secure the touchdown. You see, uh, well, everybody loves to see that on the replay. Wow. Coach Jones enjoying it on the stadium scoreboard here. What a player. Paul Mayo chased him, but caught him too late. What a run. The mad dasher. Ron Hubbard, our kickoff return. By Chad Owens. Big Island Candies in Hilo, the home of the famous chocolate dip shortbread cookie, as well as other delectable chocolates. Visit them online at BigIslandCandies.com. <laughs> Owens, a rough rider out of Honolulu Roosevelt High School. There's the kickoff. It will go to Blue, and he will not return it. Well, people, I'm sure when BYU comes to town, Jim, people are not going to kick that ball to Chad Owens. They're going to be more creative on their kickoffs. They're going to pop the ball up to the side. They're going to try to kick the ball short. They're going to do different things to keep, or if they, unless they've got somebody to kick the ball out, because uh, he has really dominated people the last five weeks. So Air Force doggedly marches onto the field again with 9.59 left. And they now trail 45 to 24. Chance Herridge back in at quarterback for the Air Force again. Herridge on a delay. Coming up the middle is Butler, Anthony Butler. Houston Allah stopped him. Went from the 24 to the, rather from the 20 to the 26 yard line, second down. And four for Air Force. Butler has played a fine, solid game for Air Force. I think what you've seen tonight, Jim, are two excellent coaches and Jim and June Jones and Fisher DeBerry that know the offenses they run very well. I'd say a seven yard game, second and three. In motion is Clark. Herridge to throw up the sideline, does throw. That's incomplete. It's intended for Labasco. Went off his hands. Labasco. Went out, stopped, and then started to come back in front of Elamimian. That'll bring up third down and three for Air Force. Stops the clock. Nine minutes and 19 seconds left. An electrifying run up the far sideline by Chad Owens. Owens, when he passed the 20, we were satisfied with his return. And then all of a sudden, he goes out to the far side, goes up the railroad track, so to speak, and then bursts into the open, and it's a foot race. What a return. That'll be talked about for a long time. Third and three. Herridge looking. Oh, he's hit. Aleppo. Keanu Aleppo, who is not supposed to be in the lineup tonight. He was hurt. Shoulder injury. So the six foot, 224 pound sophomore from Ka'aba and Kamehameha making the stop for Hawaii. 
This is a nice play by Keani Alapa. He shows tremendous discipline right there. The Warrior defense. Here we are now. We got Chad Owens returning the punt. John Welch will punt for Air Force on fourth down and two. Welch boots it. Owens in the territory. That bounces. Did it hit anybody? Did it hit a rainbow player? Apparently not. And it's finally stopped there by Joe Schliefer. Schliefer downs it for Air Force. I think this is Joe Correa that bumps him. No, that's uh, Kapanui. Yeah, Kapanui. That's Chad Kapanui. Kapanui on special High team. school teammate. That's right. They're both both from they're, Roosevelt. They're going to talk about that yeah. back in the neighborhood. So first down for Hawaii. They lead 45 to 24. It's been another fantastic night for Rolovich. Over 400 yards in passing. Rolovich again with time. Throw, sideline pattern complete to Harris. One on one. Harris able to just get around Joel Bilo. A Bilo ankle tackles him. Shannon Harris, another reception. Very short gain, however. Gain of only about two yards. Second down and eight. I think you're going to see some draws mixed in here and some screen passes and balls thrown to the outside, possibly balls thrown deep. Just under eight minutes left the play here in the fourth period. Nick Rolovich throws long. Oh, no. Here's Lundley again. Touchdown. Lovely beat Wes Crawley. That's his third touchdown of the night. That is a single season record, rather single game record for Hawaii. 285 yards. Nine receptions, 285 yards, three touchdowns for Rolovich. He's 30 for 46, 505 yards and five touchdowns. So 505 yards, another record. Kick is up, and it is good by Ayat. And they have matched their point total from last week. 52 to 24. Seventy six yard touchdown pass from Rolovich to Lali. Five hundred five yards. That's a, the record for Rolovich. The all time record is that gentleman on the right. Right, right here. Right here. Right there. Right there. That's Dan, Dan Robinson. Five hundred thirty six yards against Navy in nineteen ninety nine. He's a graduate assistant at the University of Hawaii. Maybe a fine quarterback coach for somebody. But five hundred five yards is the record for Rolovich. Eclipsing 500 yards last week. Jim, we need to say that uh, next week or two weeks when the University of Hawaii plays BYU and if BYU wins next week, they're undefeated coming in. 
this place needs to be rocking. It needs to be full. And Warrior fans need to get out here and support this team and watch this team because this team is deserving of a full house with a great atmosphere to try to beat an undefeated football team possibly. Harridge still a quarterback for Air Force on first down. Harridge to throw. Throws long. Throws it up for grabs. That's intercepted by Butts. Butts at the 30. But trying to turn the corner, he does at the 20. Butts at the 15, out of bounds, inside the 10. Sean Butts, first interception of the year. Hawaii knocking on the door again. Sean Butts has a lot of speed, and the University of Hawaii guys, once this ball was intercepted, they really turned and blocked some people. I don't know if we'll get to see these blocks. But there's several tremendous blocks. You saw a couple Air Force guys getting whacked. Jared Flint has come in now at quarterback. Ashley Lali, by the way, 285 yards and nine receptions. That's the best performance by a receiver. University of Hawaii football history. The old record held by Dwight Carter at 220 yards. Tui Ala is now in it, running back. Tui Ala of Hawaii, 5'7", senior from Waianae. Went to uh, Menlo College and then transferred back to the University of Hawaii. That's his fifth rush of the season. Second down and goal to go. Loss on the play of one. And you see Jared Flint. 8 of 20 for 112 yards and one touchdown. Flint waiting for the snap from center. Hawaii really has uh, put in their reserves now. Ball is given to Josh Galiai and Galiai down inside the five yard line. And we have a penalty fly. Jamie Arthur, the inside linebacker, number 46, made the stop for Air Force. Six minutes and 40 seconds left. In this game, Hawaii leading 52 to 24. And there you see him. Holding offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. I mean, he is a believer, June Jones is. June Jones has said, it sounds arrogant, but no one has stopped us. No one. We have only stopped ourselves. And he says, in this offense, it is designed that you should score on every single play. So the penalty moves the ball back to the 17-yard line. Flint, here comes the blitz, throws it, batted right back at him, and he, he <laughs> catches the ball and then is tackled outside the 25. So does he get a completed pass to himself? Well, that is a lot better off there. That's incomplete, though, because he, he lost uh, 10, 15 yards after he caught it. Well, you see the, the bat and then the reception. Ball is all the way out to the 35-yard line. Third down. Jared Flint is the quarterback. He's from Irvine, California. Went to Orange Coast College. Uso and Chad Owens are to the far side. As the receivers. Flint throws. This is complete to Owens. Look out. Owens trying to get outside. Gets away from Mayo. Gets to the 25. Owens trying to turn the corner, can't do it, but he does get inside the 20-yard line. What a player. What a game he has played. Chad Owens. Owens, that's his fifth reception. Owens is amazing. Let's see Chad Owens. He catches this football. Looks like he's just about done here. And he turns up all the way back across the field and nearly gets a block to spring himself. Larry Duncan finally twirls him to the turf. Triple wide receiver to the far side. Josh Galliari back there with uh, Jared Flint. Flint looking, looking, throws over the middle. That's batted in the air, incomplete. It was intended for Uso on fourth down, intended for Uso. In the end zone. Chad Owens, only a freshman, Jim. Only a freshman. Mayo is down. Paul Mayo, he's played his heart out for Air Force. 
you know, Air Force is going to have to stay here in Hawaii, Jim, and they're going to practice on Monday in Hawaii and then take a plane back to uh, because they couldn't change their reservations. Their reservations were to stay longer. They're going to have to stay here, practice for the Utah game, and then go back after a practice on Monday. So they work on on the Paul Mayo. On Mayo. Let's see it. He makes a good play. Uh, and then just, it looks like he just he just twisted his ankle or his knee. Paul Mayo has been burned tonight. He's been burned by Ashley Lalee, an outstanding receiver. But do not mistake Paul Mayo. He will become a great leader of men through the Air Force Academy and his experiences on a football field. It all adds up to have an officer like Paul Mayo in the future. Go anywhere. Go anywhere with him. Mayo, 5'10", 180. That's 5'10". That's probably inflated a bit. First down for Air Force. Ball is given to the fullback. Todd Leslie just into the game. Four minutes and 30 seconds left. Kevin Jackson finally gets the angle on him. Moves from the 18-yard line out to the 24. And on the play of six, second down and four for Air Force. Chance Harridge continues at quarterback for the academy. Fisher right. DeBerry, as you see there, uh, Jim, on our, our screen, is one of the winningest coaches in college football. I think he's like sixth or seventh winningest coach there's active the, in college football. There's the pitch to Palmer. Palmer turned back inside. And an excellent job that time by uh, Keith Bonafo. Bonafo from, uh, or Bonafo from uh, Oakland, California. He went to Skyline High School, like Robert Grant did, 5'9", uh, junior. University of Hawaii will need the week off that they have coming up prior to the BYU game. They're going to have to get some people well. Ball is given to the halfback. Carrying the ball is Don Clark. And Clark out to two, about the 35-yard line. Hawaii has never given up 500 rushing yards in a game, but they're very close to that now. In fact, 499. So one more yard, and Air Force will go over 500 yards on the ground. Second down and three for the Air Force. Ball is kept thrown. Open, but the ball overthrown. Leotis Palmer at about the 40-yard line. Herridge could not connect with him. That'll bring up third down. <laughs> I'm talking to people next door. Yes, yes you are. <laughs> huh? Yes, you are. You carried on. I forgot I was on TV. Carried, carried, I was talking on. to the president of the university. Through the glass. I know. I know. <laughs> Two minutes and 58 seconds. This is our final game. I want to uh, really thank you, Coach. I mean, uh, I, I think you've done a tr tremendous job. It was a pleasure working with you, too. Jim, it's been great working with you, and, and the people that on, the, on the, the crew here are just so professional that I, it's, been, it's been easy for me. Uh, I tried to get better, but everybody's made it so easy because they're so professional. And yourself, I've, I've admired your work for many years. And now I've gotten a chance to see it up close and personal. And you wonder how it's done, huh? Yeah. It's chaotic. And I, and chaotic. I, wonder, I wonder why I admire it. <laughs> <laughs> the run by Herridge puts Air Force over the 500-yard mark. First down from the 44-yard line. Herridge is grabbed, twirled to the turf back at the 40. Excellent play by Kevin Jackson. I've never heard of gaining 500 yards rushing and losing a game. That's a milestone. Take a look at this play. You see Kevin Jackson just wrapping him up. Harridge to throw again. Throws. That is complete to Brown. And Brown is hit down short of the first down at about the 49 yard line. Josiah Cravalho now playing in the secondary for Hawaii. I remember seeing Jim and Arquise that I thought if, if Hawaii could run. 
they would enhance their chances if Air Force could throw, and Air Force has not been able to throw until now. Eridge gives the ball up the middle. Todd Leslie backs his way, fumbles the ball, and let's see. Air Force is going to keep it. And Air Force, in their style of attack, needs to be able to throw the play action passes on running downs to keep the secondary honest because the secondary of Rich Miano uh, did a great job of reading run and pass well and making it impossible for them to, uh, to do that. Here's another sidebar to this game on first down from the 45 of Hawaii. Herridge will run, and he has some room. And he runs out of bounds at the 32. There is another sidebar, and that is Air Force was one of those teams, one of those schools that surreptitiously met at an airport and all of those things, but pulled out of the Western Athletic Conference and did not ho invite Hawaii back in. In other words, they dissed Hawaii, saying that the athletic program here was not worthy of being in their league. So when talking to the players this week, the players were saying, we want to show Air Force that we can still play, that we still have the ability to beat them. Absolutely. And I think that's a point well taken and something that uh, is very meaningful to not only the players, but people of the state of Hawaii, because uh, I was with that particular week, Jim. I was with Lavelle Edwards. I was with Sonny Lubick. I was with Ted Tolner all that week at a golf tournament and none of those coaches knew that that decision had been made. It was made all at the presidential level. None of them knew it had been made. were not aware of it. And so it was something that was made at the very highest levels. There's Mike Cavanaugh getting doused. The offensive line coach. Carriage runs out of bounds. 114 left in the game. Hawaii will advance to 8 and 3 on the year. And two weeks they will face BYU the final game of the season our coverage ends with this game tonight against Air Force I want to uh, thank Tom Yoshida our statistician he's done a fine job up here he has tight rope walk with us throughout this season third down and seven for Air Force Heritage to throw sideline pattern and he throws it into the ground that stops the clock with a minute ten and we'll bring up a fourth down for Air Force. Air Force will dip to five and six after 11 games, and they will play Utah next next week. And they are looking they're looking for somebody. And they get the coach. That feels so good. Because that means victory. Herridge throws. And that is a catch close to the first down. That ball caught by Anthony Butler, who has uh, scored a touchdown tonight for Air Force. 102 left to play in the game. David Gilmore made the stop for Hawaii. Herridge keeping to the 15, chased down by uh, Kevin Jackson. So Air Force closing in on another score, but that will not change the outcome of this game. 46 seconds left. Air Force has called the timeout. We will too. 52 to 24. Less than a minute to play. The origin of baseball had been attributed to Abner Doubleday. But historians today trace it back to the English game of rounders and American Alexander Cartwright. In 1845, Cartwright took this game and wrote a new set of rules. He then formed his own team, the Knickerbocker Baseball Club of New York. The Knickerbockers played their first game in 1846 against the New York Nine in Hoboken, New Jersey. Baseball quickly spread throughout the country, aided in part by the Civil War as soldiers carried the game home with them. Then in 1869, the first professional team was created. Others followed, and in 1876, eight teams formed the National League. The American League was organized in 1901, and two years later, the first World Series was played between the two leagues. Today, baseball is one of the most popular sports in the country and is called America's national pastime. This Red Star moment sponsored by Heineken. It's all about the beer. This is the play of the game. The 100-yard kickoff return 
by Chad Owens. What a run. And only a freshman. Only a freshman. Forty-four seconds left. Second down and two for Air Force. Herridge looking in to the end zone. Now throw short of the end zone. It's dropped. Adam Strecker from Littleton, Colorado. That'll bring up third down. We'd like to uh, thank our player identification personnel, Mike Perkins and Grant Farias. David Gilmore uh, covering on that last play. Our producer, Dan Schmidt. Ball is given to Todd Leslie. Leslie cracks inside the 10 for the first down. That stops the clock with 34 seconds left. Air Force would like to score one more time. Unit manager. Anthony Smith. He's uh, done a fine job for us all year long. Aaron Iomasa, also our director. Our players of the game, Keith Boyer, 18 rushes, 132 yards and one touchdown, and Ashley Lalee, nine receptions, 285 yards and three touchdowns. Lalee, that's the finest single-game performance in University of Hawaii history for a wide receiver. And Lalee another, just continues to amaze. Another great night uh, up front by Mike Cavanaugh's offensive line that enable Rolovich, Lalee, et cetera, to do their do their thing. And our associate producer, Candice Fujishima, also uh, added to that list. A very dedicated uh, people that bring you these telecasts every week from Hawaii. So those are our Verizon players of the game. Herridge pitches back. This is Butler trying for the touchdown to get in. So nice. a touchdown for the Air Force. Nice job by the Air Force Academy. Coach DeBerry's got a game this next week with the University of Utah. It's an important game for his program because if they don't win it, they have a, they have a losing season. They have not had many of those in the, Coach DeBerry's 18 years. So it'll be it'll be a, a week that uh, takes a lot of pride from his football team. You see, nice job of executing the option there for the touchdown. 52 to 30 in favor of Hawaii. They are going to go for two. Herridge keeping pitches back. Here's Butler again, one on one. Butler, does he get in? No. Excellent job, goodness. Terrific hit on the option. David Gilmore. That is a great hit by David Gilmore. Gilmore, the sophomore from Albuquerque, New Mexico, he went to Dorado High School in Albuquerque. Six footer, 178 pounds. Let's sophomore. watch this now. Coming from inside out. That's a tremendous job. David Gilmore making the initial hit. And then right here, being kept out of the end zone. A lot of pride on that play by the University of Hawaii. So it remains 52 to 30. Tickets issued for this game, 41,148. Now Air Force has to kick off again. And Chad Owens, who had a 100-yard return, is back there, along with Mark Tate. There's Nick Rolovich signing some autographs. He's probably learning how to sign that autograph real fast as he keeps stacking up the touchdown passes. 29 seconds left. Onside kick. That's grabbed by Air Force. You cannot advance an onside kick. That's grabbed by Air Force, and it will be first down for Air Force. Adam Larson from Apple Valley, Minnesota. A sophomore just reached out and grabbed it. Excellent, excellent kickoff that time by Walters. So the ball is at the 46 yard line of Air Force with 26 seconds left. Hawaii continues to use their reserves. 
as this game has been handily won already. It has been, Jim, but what I like to see is I like to see all the Hawaii players that were supported by their by the second third teamers. I like to see them enthusiastically supporting these guys while they're playing because they deserve that. They deserve to be supported just like the other guys were because it's just as important to the players on the field that they stop the other team right now as it was in the first quarter. And I, I, I try to, I want to keep everybody in the game here and not let people just get. 32 yard pass to Brian Labasco. Labasco up the near sideline. So the ball is now at the 22. The Air Force with still 18 seconds left. Herridge throws it. That's picked off. This could be a touchdown. It's going to be a touchdown. It's going to be a touchdown. Milhouse. Kelvin Milhouse. Oh, no. They finally caught him. Credit Herridge. Herridge got the angle on him, and Mike Feverkorn finally came over to tackle him. For Milhouse, that is his fifth interception of the season. Milhouse has a good instinct for the football. Nice job of breaking in front of the receiver. And Herridge runs very well. He Broke. pins him into the sideline. Broke in front of Ricky Amazaga. Makes him cut back. So the ball is on the 12 yard line. Still five seconds left. This Hawaii should, is going to take a knee. This should be a knee right here. 68 yard interception return. Hawaii will win this game 52 to 30. Hawaii is now eight and three on the year. They have one game left. And that is against BYU in two weeks on the 8th of December. Air Force will finish against Utah next week. Our coverage finishes tonight. We'll be back for a final word. Uh, we're going, we're, we are going to uh, not go away. We are going to stay here. So the final score, Hawaii 52, and the Air Force gets 30. For my broadcast partner, Dick Tomey, and for Russell Yamanoha, along with the entire Hawaii crew, it's been another great season. Thanks for watching, everybody. And as always, now more than ever, Malama Pono.